Hello, everybody. Welcome to this session. Back once again, I'm your host, Justin Crossley. And with me hosting today, nobody else. It's just me again. I'm so lonely. <laughs> lonely in my studio. Hosting by myself. I kind of like it nowadays. I don't it's have nice. To, I don't yeah. have to talk over anybody. Uh-huh. You yeah, know? well, you're talking to yourself right now, so, <laughs> I mean. I, was, I do it off air anyway. I've already Might interrupted well re- me several times. <laughs> Might as well get paid for it. Uh, sort of paid for it. Uh, welcome to the show. With me, our, our guest today, um, back from the olden days, Back from the grave, as you're going to find out. Back from all sorts of things. Dave Marley of Uvu. Still not my name, but it is fantastic <laughs> to be back. Dave Marley is back on the show. Still also not my name. Damn it. Still fantastic Dave Marley of. Boom. We got it. Back on the show. <laughs> Some things Three's never change. <laughs> Um, he's got a new brewery. We're going to learn about the old brewery. Uh, new Spring is the new brewery. It is indeed. From somewhere in Oregon. Albany, Oregon. Albany. Is that close to um, Eugene? Uh, it's right on the Corvallis border. Corvallis, so I'm, I'm, the, the new brewery site is uh, like 15 miles away from the old one. Okay. Just the other side of the Willamette River and a little north. Got it. All right. It's not your house, is it? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> that's sort of <laughs> that's a, the next round. That's what I was going to say. That's sort of the uh, next step I thought from you. Yeah, was, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, our, our front yard did look like a brewery for about two and a half years, but thankfully okay. uh, that's no longer the case. And Okay. Let me get through a few things, then we're going to dive right in. But, of course, thanks to our sponsor, More Beer. You can go to morebeer.com and check them out and check out all the things that you need. Whether you're a pro brewer or a home brewer or a winemaker or coffee, all the things... Uh, go to morebeer.com and thank them for sponsoring this show because we're still here almost literally because of those folks right there. Of course, our other wonderful sponsors, too. But the but More Beer brings you the session, which, let's be honest, Dave, is still the best show on television. Always. Ha- Wait, we're on television? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sort of. We're on YouTube sometimes, maybe. No, I don't keep up with the youths and I don't, tubes. And I don't have a producer now, so I assume it's going out to YouTube, but sure. I don't really know for sure. Um, and no one ever tells me. So I just keep pretending that we're there and that things are working. And it's it's been working for me that way. Pretending Dan. is at least half the battle. <laughs> it's also been the way I run the BN for you know, the entire time. Re- reality is all a uh, perception anyway. So <laughs> That's right. Um, all right. Other ways to support us, not just by helping out our sponsors, but do your Amazon shopping through uh, the Brewing Network. Just click, click one of those Amazon links on our homepage and then, you know, find something you like. It's, that's all you got to do. It doesn't cost you any extra money, and it's a good way to support the show. Um, okay. And then... One other thing before we dive into the saga that is Dave's life, uh, as it has been since we've met you, which was really a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. We'll figure that out in a second. I I wanted to give a couple more Great American Beer Festival shout-outs. On the last episode, I missed a couple very important uh, shout-outs. One of them was our old friend Shat the Producer. Oh, no shit. uh, Yeah, I think he won two medals this year. Oh, that's a big mistake. So... uh, Bankhead Brewing out of Texas is Chad's brewery, oh, yeah. uh, and he's been there for years now, building that up. And yeah, the guy got two different medals at That's the That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So he's just doing great. Um, our friends at Russian River uh, won a couple medals, um, and then uh, my friends at Original Pattern, too, won for the second year in a row in the same category with their Session IPA. That's hard to do. They won gold last year and silver this year, which, you know... If you're my friend and you were in the room, I'd be like, well, it sounds like you're sucking a little more. But it's really hard to get any metal, right? <laughs> yeah, we bageled this year. So, yeah. you know, hey, what uh, you going to do? Yeah. You know what? A lot of great breweries did. And great ones that usually show really well in competition. Yeah. So, in other words, you donuts are in good company. Well, that's obviously why we didn't get medals, <laughs> because all the best breweries didn't win this year. There really were a lot that surprised me. Yeah, I, I don't think Pelican got anything for the first time in quite a while. Yeah. Uh, Ghost Town, who won, they've won, like, everything for the last two years. Not, they, they yeah, donut. Um yeah, a few like that. So you know, it's it's obviously 
the vast majority of what gets you a medal is having great fucking beer. But there's also sure. a little bit of a crapshoot in that first round, too. You know, you can have great beers get kicked out. Yeah. I think even sometimes at the finals table, you know, I've heard judges arguing and then finally they're like, all right, you know, fuck it. Just give it to whoever you want to. Yeah, I, I did have a milk stout kicked out one year for being too dark in the uh, final round. <laughs> Where's so, the milk? Yeah, it was yeah. too dark. Uh, anyway, congratulations to all the brewers once again at the Great American Beer Festival. And I just wanted to particularly give a shout out to Chad. Can't believe I didn't give him in the last show, but yeah, it's pretty weak. Everyone knows I'm a terrible asshole, friend. So that's fine. Okay, so let's just dive right into some of the things that we know and that we don't know. Basically, the last time I heard much about your career, Dave, was Flat Tails Open doing what it does um and you like you had some distributor emergency like distributors were were consolidating and all of this shit was happening and you got left just with the shit end of the stick with that yeah that's the long story short for sure okay but apparently what took place after that which (laughs) presumably you sorted out and figured out how to get your beer distributed what took after that took place after that like like dominates over this stupid distributor story oh yeah a little bit okay <laughs> a little bit <laughs> what year was it that this distributor problem so came the up? the distributor issue was good god all the way back in 2017 or 2018 okay and uh gdi general distributors uh which was like a 98 year old independently owned family distributor uh we we literally partnered with them like a huge part of that was they had been family owned for almost a goddamn century so it was like well they're not selling out yeah uh and they got (laughs) bought by columbia and i actually found out when my buddy lee from two towns sent me a text joking about being in the same book and i was like the fuck are you talking about you're with (laughs) columbia and I just get this, oh, God, you don't know. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah they didn't even tell us. Wow. And uh, so. That industry. Yeah, it was a real bummer. And uh, GDI had been prepping for the sale for a long time, just dumping money into their big brands, really not paying attention to any of their smaller indie portfolio at okay. all. Um, and so we, we tried to go immediately back to self-distribution and got a big nasty letter from Columbia's lawyer. Uh, basically saying like, no, we own you, and all these reasons you said our our contract can be canceled don't exist. And <laughs> we then, still own you. Yeah, yeah. So after uh, almost three months of just not selling any beer outside of Corvallis uh, and Eugene, they <laughs> signed an agreement to let us self distribute. You know, and in how much of your beer was distributed outside the, prior to the that vast time? majority? Okay, so yeah. you just so you got like covid fucked before covid even happened pretty much <laughs> when, yeah when yeah like all of a sudden no one could sell beer so it, it yeah. was nuts i mean we, we drove a van up to portland like two or three days after we got the news and did a great sales round and then we got that c and d right right away wow, and uh wow, quickly wow. realized you know you can listen to the death of craft beer and franchise laws episode from yeah whenever yeah. the fuck this happened but uh yeah it, it crippled us i mean we were in Safeways and gas stations and C stores all over Multnomah County. Uh, and overnight, we lost every grocery and every chain account we had north of Corvallis. Okay. Instantly. So, you, you know, going from packaging hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of cases of beer every month to we don't have any grocery, we don't have any C stores, none of that. So we, we not only went from relying on distributors in every territory except our, our you know local home base and about a 50 mile circle uh we also went from being package heavy to draft only hmm. in in the matter of three months because there was just you know when, you, when you've got a grocery store they want that shit merchandised yeah daily yeah, yeah. i had two employees you just can't, doing that yeah, yeah you can't merchandise 30 accounts with two employees yeah so our, our entire business model completely changed. And then, you know, COVID, yeah. you had to be in package. <laughs> and yeah, we, yeah. we hadn't had cans or bottles for years. So it was... Uh, I see. It was a doozy. Okay. So all of that happens, but mm-hmm. I, I presume you think you're getting back on your feet at some point because you, you, you were still there. Yeah. A little bit. 
I mean, you're also not the brightest guy I've ever met, so fair, maybe you were still point. there. <laughs> maybe you were. Um, so let's see. So that's 27, 2018. Uh, you get through 2019. I, you start self-distributing. But then COVID hits. And I haven't talked to you since then. Really. You know, the, the shit storm actually happened in 2019. Okay. And if you want me to dive in. Uh, the shit storm. Uh, oh, so you never. Okay, great. So to dive into what we're really here to talk about, <laughs> that's what happened in 2019. Yeah. This episode could be called like how to get fucked. The Dave Marley of story. <laughs> Um, without COVID, by right. the way. I, did, I think I did get COVID, too, but it was early <laughs> enough that I'm not positive. Well, I just meant that maybe your business did even get COVID. Oh, it, yeah. Because it, it, it... I mean, we... Okay. So yeah. 2019 rolls wrong. You, you, you've already dealt with your... You're now self-distributing again. Mm-hmm. You're figuring it all out. You're doing what you do. What happens in 2019? So for quite a while, things had been eh, not so great. Uh a lot of tension around finances and just never really made sense. Uh, I had relied on my partners for a long time. How many partners uh, do you have? So there were six owners, three couples, and uh, one of those couples completely in charge of the books, which first tip, that's a bad idea. Okay. If you have business partners. And then the other couple is what? Uh, other couple, silent partners. And then you and your wife. Uh, I run the brewery. My wife is a full-time teacher and really has never had any active involvement. But you the are business. the third couple. Yeah, but we are the third couple. Okay, yeah. got it. So you're running the brewery mm-hmm. and I think the restaurant, too. Weren't you sort of the GM also? N- not really. Okay. Uh, in 2018, I had to step into the restaurant a lot more because my, my partner, Ian, uh, fucked his hip up and basically just stopped showing up to work okay um so i definitely had to start getting a lot more involved at that point but we had a thank god a great gm uh kyle just really helped keep things running without that much of a disruption yeah and you know honestly way better with employees um and in retrospect you know way better at like not embezzling um as well so he he helped me keep things going and kind of taught me how to run my own restaurant at that point because i had been buried in the brewery since day one yeah um, you yeah. know i i had uh sean martin who's been on the show a bunch of times was my head brewer for i think just under three years uh and then i had another head brewer for about two years and uh other than that five or six years i've been the only brewer at flat tail for all you know decade plus we were in business okay so that that was my main focus for the vast majority and then 2018 yeah. happens Ian fucks his hip up and that's when i started kind of getting into the restaurant business okay uh, a little bit more all right so 2019 rolls around things are going things are going fine or not fine fine adjacent just you plugging know, along we were nervous but we also had an opportunity to buy our building back and uh at a, at a very good price uh we had it worked into our lease we we basically sold the building to um someone we used to be partners with that owned half of the building and part of the agreement was that when we bought it back half of the price was fair market appraisal and the other half of the price was the original sale price okay so we were about to get this you know appraised at 1.9 million dollar building for like 1.2 mil okay Great deal yeah uh but in march of 2019 I'm in the back of the brewery by one of our open tanks, you know, doing brewer things. And uh, my former business partner walks up to me and, uh, you know, he's got that look on his face like, oh, fuck, something's something's going on. And I'm thinking, great, what broke or like what's leaking or something like that. And uh, walks up to me and says, yeah, we got to talk. Turns out um, I think we have like a bunch of tax debt. Okay. Uh huh. <laughs> and of course, you never dealt with the books before no, this. You know? No. Yeah. So I'm like, what the fuck does you think we have a bunch of tax debt mean, man? <laughs> like, that's a. Yeah. Uh, like, what are we, like, 10 grand behind? Like, sure. That, to me, that's a bunch. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. To me, that's a bunch, too. <laughs> it's not a bunch, though. A bunch, as it turns out, is, like, way fucking bigger than, oh, than no. what I thought a bunch was. So I'm asking him, like, well, you know, what does that mean? Like, you got to give me something. And and he tells me, well, you know, I don't really know. Tanya does, you know, most of the books, but I think it's like $100,000. Oh, shit. Yeah. So, I mean, instant panic attack. Yeah. Obviously, just like, you know, I'm thinking, like, things aren't great, but, like, we're, it's March. We're going into spring, summer. I've got all these new ideas. We're going to 
put our sours back in 12 ounce. We've got a lot of projects that are looking really positive. And now you're telling me we're six figures in debt to the fucking IRS. Right. Like how, how could we possibly be that have accumulated that much debt? Yeah. Without any other owner of the business knowing, (laughs) you you know, like we, we had a meeting a couple months ago and I, I, I think I would have remembered a like hundred thousand dollars on the fucking P and L owed to the IRS. Like it's, 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 it would have been right there, right? Like it's not it's not there, man. So like this is, I, I guess we need like an all owner meeting on Monday, and like I need you to send me a P and L, you know, yeah. that actually shows what I guess our debt is. I need balance sheet. I need you know just ask them for all of these basic financial documents and. uh you know, at that point, like I, uh, I didn't even have access to the pub side bank account. So we had a different bank accounts for the brewery and the restaurant. Okay. Yeah. So let's do this. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, it's going to be Monday morning after (laughs) finding out that you're a hundred thousand dollars in tax debt. And we're going to find out what happens next. You're listening to the session. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the program. Thanks for hanging out with us. You're still listening to the session. And I am here with Dave, formerly the artist formerly known as Flat Tail. Mm-hmm. And now the artist known as the brewer and owner of New Spring Brewing Company. That's it. But we haven't quite gotten to that yet. We'll, we'll talk about New Spring when we get there. But so far, we're still at Flat Tail. It's a Friday afternoon, and you've just been told you owe... A hundred thousand dollars plus in and ta- back taxes. Circle gets the square. So you ask for well, we need a meeting on Monday, yeah. and I want documentation. That's the one. So what happens over the weekend and on Monday? Yeah. So in the process of uh, winning the lottery in reverse, um, <laughs> yeah. the, the next day I uh, I get a call from me and and he's like, hey man, you know I we want to give you all that stuff, but like we want to show it to you in person so you don't misunderstand anything. <laughs> and I'm trying and I, I wish you had a recording of the tone oh, in that me uh, too buddy me too <laughs> because uh, just the tone alone yeah and like you know where I was at in my head is you know obviously something was really fucking wrong yeah yeah but also and, and by the way your two silent partners you, you've made them yeah. aware of this I assume that, so this is Saturday at yeah, this okay. point and I have not yet because okay. I'm not I, so I don't know what the fuck out. to say fair yeah I was I was actually at the grocery store when he called at like like seven or eight in the morning on Saturday. Okay. Um, I didn't even told Emma yet at that point because I, I just kept in my head going through like, what, what do I tell anyone? Yeah. Like, I guess we're in a shit ton of debt, but I don't know how or why or when. Uh, so, you know, he says that. And, and that was like, to me, that was the moment where I was like the glass shattered and, you know, years of not really liking this guy but being bonded through trauma and honestly you know we talk about this more later really like groomed into being Mm. okay with everything that was happening uh when he said you know i don't want you to misunderstand anything that was when it just the veil was lifted and it was like that that's not something someone says if they didn't fucking do this (laughs) right you're like you're fast forward and let me ask you that uh up until this point were there no flags or suspicions about these partners of yours running the books in the restaurant? <laughs> Let me put it this way. And They're, I'm not trying to call you out oh, for no, no, anything, no. You, just so you know. Yeah. I, I mean that genuinely because I'm, I'm like a super trusting person, actually. Yeah, but even still, be. I'd be like, uh, this is a little fishy. The, there just were, a couple things. I there were a lot of red flags in okay. retrospect. And, you know, I, I wish it's not that I don't listen or didn't listen to Emma. It was that I just I couldn't believe that something could be that wrong. Mm, so Emma but knew. she she fucking hated them. Yeah, she knew. <laughs> she knew she well knew. before. Um, but you know, in the back of my mind too, when when we started Flat Tail, I was fucking twenty two, right? And I had such a laser focused vision and just dedication to uh, the only reason I fucking exist right now is yeah. to own my brewery and make the best goddamn beer I can. Yeah, and that's all 
that that was me for so long in in your defense as crazy as you are (laughs) you are the most focused dedicated driven 20 year old i've ever met in my life i mean i did win the dedication to personal success award (laughs) exactly yeah yeah uh, yeah yeah it's a real for giving me that (laughs) it's a real reward right (laughs) there award Uh Uh, but no i mean that so um yeah i can see you're just driven and going for it and whatever but anyhow so there were flags yeah i mean i i uh prior to um you know when this happened i I think the most i had ever paid myself i think i made 25 grand one year okay and every other year was either zero to ten thousand dollars and you just accepted it as part of building the business yeah Yeah. absolutely but you know in talking about this kind of process that to me was was uh, purposeful Mm -hmm. i believe in, in retrospect you know, the whole process was always full of like, yeah, your beer is great. Your beer is great. And then, but the business isn't making enough money and it's the brewery's fault. Yeah. You know, the restaurant's doing great, but we have to keep giving money to the brewery side. And that's why things don't work out. But the beer is great. It's that constant, like negging and then complimenting. And then, yeah, and yeah. it really does break you down. And when, when you're someone who has tunnel vision, like I did, and you're so focused on, this is my craft and this is my purpose and this is what I do. And if I do this better, yeah, then we're going to do better. Yeah. And yeah. it's all on me. Okay, you know, that yeah. was the position I really felt like I was in for so long that I just was blinded to sure. to anything else. Okay. Yeah. Well, speaking of, you know, bringing you up or down, why don't we take a break to talk about your beer <laughs> that's in our glass right now? Yeah. <laughs> Tell so, us about uh, this. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, called Sploot Light. Okay. Uh, no, it's not a weird sex thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So like when a dog gets hot and it stretches its legs out in front and behind at the same time, that's a sploot. <laughs> yeah. According to what? According that's, to, that's you know, a real thing. Google? Veterinary yeah, medicine? Yeah, Google that shit and okay. you get a bunch of adorable corgis. Okay. Uh, anyone who's ever worked for me or met me for more than five minutes knows that I like dogs way the fuck more than people. Okay. Uh, it was my favorite thing about flat tail was just like hanging out outside and petting all the dogs as they came by. So sure. Sploot light basically was my, uh, latest like hail Mary because you know, as anyone who's listened to the shows before knows, I really built my brand on sours, experimental beers, specialty beers. Uh, and especially, uh, when we pivoted to new spring, um, I mean, I, I opened with a 9% alcohol, cherry almond porter and yeah. And yeah. a Marion berry sour. Okay. Um, and over the past few years, uh, the beer market just, it's changed. Yeah. It has changed significantly. Yeah. And, and I can't go out and sell a truckload of $300 half barrels anymore. Okay. And also, you know, my palate has changed along with a lot of industry members. You know, you, you see three brewers at a bar, and more often than not, they're all drinking the light lager or the Pilsner or the Hellas. Um, there's a lot of elegance in those styles. And, and you can really, you know, you want to know what kind of brewer someone is, taste their lightest beer. Yeah. Um, so in that vein, and as, you know, a lot of craft and indie brewers are really trying to get that kind of lighter beer out into the market, one of the things that stuck out to me was like people are either doing light loggers, but mm-hmm. they don't realize how fucking hard it is mm-hmm. and they're rushing them to make them somewhat affordable, but they're still coming out as, you know, 180, 190 half barrel and then a cow will buy that once. Yeah. But it's so hard these days for a small independent brewer to get a, you know, like permanent handle. Yeah. My goal was what can I do that gets me a permanent handle? So uh, I'd been talking to uh, Morgan over the Brass Monkey in Corvallis, who's been you know a longtime friend. Uh, her bar is literally right across the street from the old Flat Tail location. Okay, and she was like, "Dude, give me something cheap and light that tastes good." Right. <laughs> like, yeah. That's it. Do it. So I basically took a, a slightly modified you know American light lager grist, and I uh, used an ale yeast to ferment it. And uh, that's sploot, you know, 25 percent wow. corn. So not even lagered. No, it's pretty five. clean though. That is, but cab- it's maybe it's just too light not to be clean. So you can totally oh, ale this light of a beer. <laughs> uh, well, and you can, and and that's one of the things that kept blowing me away is like, why would you make a rushed hmm. light lager when you can just make an ale? Like right. a, a little bit of Cal Ale citrusy ester is not going to ruin this style of beer. No. And uh, it, it not only did I immediately realize, like, I, I can have this shit from kettle to keg in two weeks. Okay, yeah. And it sells 
fucking phenomenally. Is that right? Yeah. It's your best-selling beer? Absolutely. I mean, I have uh, two accounts in Corvallis that do one or two kegs a week, Okay, which yeah. in our tiny town is a great uh, sure. Sell through, and then yeah. I have a the vast majority are doing a keg every week and a half, two weeks, right? Right, and they keep it on because when everything else is seven or eight bucks a glass, they're charging three or four for this, right? Right, and everyone, uh, even when you go into a, a craft beer bar these days, the the vast majority of those customers are still price conscious. Yeah, you know, I'm price conscious. Sure. I have to be. Yeah, same. So, I am too. Yeah, like if I see some, you know, if, if there's a rare keg of Cantillon on tap or something, I'm going to still order that, <laughs> but I'm going to get one. That, and that's your beer for the week. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. It's like I'm scrounging through my pockets for yeah. cash so it doesn't show up on the fucking bank statement. Yeah. Uh, but with this, like you can have, you can enjoy beer for it just being beer. Yeah. Um, I also could probably enjoy this for most of the day. Yeah. And not fall over. Yeah. 4% yeah. finishes at, you know, 10.04, 10.02. No, 10.02. Okay. Um, yeah. And I mean, it, it, it is, it's an easy beer to brew in that it spends almost no time in tank. It's a hard beer to brew in that, like, I really have to nail the pH specifically because okay. I, I like to get as low as possible without it being perceived as sour. Yeah. So you get that super crisp a good Mexican point. lager kind of uh finish to it and by the way it's right there because mm-hmm. i almost was like oh man is this is this going to be a kettle sour but then it does totally finish yeah. clean but yeah right when it hits the palate there's a little just uh, acidity uh like like that acidulated malt type of yeah totally um but it goes away like a clean beer so yeah. i can i did i would have thought about that so that th- you have this to... finishes at 3.95 okay um i am gonna bump up the next batch to four 4.05 somewhere right around there just to reduce that almost tart yeah exactly yeah. a tiny bit yeah uh but then you get up to like 4.2 4.3 in a beer like this and it starts tasting round and flabby and okay yeah yeah i also uh, uh use a lot more minerals um in the in the work than in a you know classic american light lager it's okay. not like full dortmund or you know salt profile but uh there's some uh, calcium chloride in there and then i do if i have to adjust the ph up at all i use a little bit of chalk built in there so you get a little bit of that carbonate kind of uh, firmness to it as well yeah i like it uh i would drink a six pack at a time absolutely that's the goal but i'd stop there though that's it Mm -hmm. that's six (laughs) (laughs) It's, it's good though okay so let's back up now so here we are. You're still trying to. You've been told uh, we want to meet you in person to explain the numbers to yeah. your to your numbskull face. Yeah. So I <laughs> pretty much it was like, hey, you know, we want to tell you, but you're a fucking idiot, so we got to do it in person. Yeah. Um, so okay. I'm like, yeah, no, man, that that doesn't work. Like, email me that shit. Like, oh, good for you. You yeah. have it. Just yeah. send it to me. Yeah. And that's when he starts just getting defensive. And and the dude always had a temper, but it was like zero to 60 okay. just no like we're gonna fucking do it in person i'm like no like I'm, I'm the fucking managing member of this llc like you are legally obligated to send me this shit yeah. right now do it yeah and uh is this on the phone are you in, texting in the back and forth aisle, man in the meat oh, exactly. oh yeah <laughs> I'm That's like right, looking for yeah. discount fucking pork chops <laughs> screaming at someone in the phone like a goddamn crazy person yeah um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it, so it ends with him basically telling me to go fuck myself and hanging up on me. Wow. Yeah. So now, if you weren't certain before, uh-huh. this is as... Yeah. And you must have this, like, stomach-dropping Ooh. feeling, because even... I'm just putting myself in your shoes. Yeah. I'm like, okay, even if my partners are at fault and I'm not, it doesn't matter. Right. The bottom is falling out. Yeah, and yeah. tax debt is forever. Yeah, yeah. You know, okay. it's as long as fucking Wu Tang. Like that <laughs> shit doesn't go away. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, so that that was when I, you know, I went out to my car and like just sat in stunned silence for a few minutes or an hour. I don't fucking remember. Um, because yeah, you, you know, you're describing it as that like gut punch moment, yeah, and yeah. I mean, it, it was I, I've been through some shit in my day, and that was just my entire world crumbling down around me. Yeah, there's because a song it, about that. Or yeah, several was that like Alanis Morissette? Yeah, or something? I think I so. think I skipped that album. Yeah, um, it's a good one. Yeah, I'll have to download <laughs> it on the the tunes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
So, all right, you go home now. Yeah, you go I, home, I go home, and I'm like, I gotta, cry. I gotta tell Emma what the fuck is going on, and I still don't know, but at this point, that call gave me enough to, sure. to like, okay, this <laughs> things are bad. There's something not so fucking kosher here, and uh, yeah, I'll never forget. We were out in our front yard. Uh, she had just built this beautiful little stone patio. Mm-hmm. I'm like, hey, we got a duck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just anything. Yeah, to... Like you might you might want to grab a bottle of whiskey, right? Um, man, and sure. you know, I'm just fucking shaking. And, oh man! And I tell her like I I don't really know what just happened, but, but I think we're this is what happened. Yeah, okay. and I, I just told her you know everything that that I had been through and, and heard and yeah, and and uh, does she immediately say I told you so or does she wait? She is a much better human than I am. <laughs> right, um, yeah. You know, honestly, yeah. like, I remember everything leading up to telling her like it was yesterday, and okay, I will yeah. never be able to forget it. I have no idea what she said to me. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I'm sure my take was basically like, you should divorce me, because <laughs> this is going to be bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, And no, she... She was obviously crushed and, yeah, yeah. you know, beyond angry. How long had you guys been running the company at this point? I mean, you really... Nine ran. and a half years. Is that right? Yeah. I, gosh, I didn't think it was that long. That's a long time. Yeah. yeah when okay. we closed the doors, it was 11 years. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, uh, somehow she stuck with me and, you know, we basically spent the whole day digging up everything we could all the balance sheets and shit we did have so he never sent your partner never sent that stuff you demanded we got an email on sunday on sunday okay. and it was just a like typed out gmail uh, no documents just uh-huh. a, a list it was like debt list okay yeah and uh you know the first thing i noticed was uh one hundred eighty thousand dollars was now what they were uh saying i believe no excuse me they they, they wrote like 140 okay 141 as the something owed like okay. shit ton of money more than the shit ton of money yeah that, l- that listen at this point between 140 and 180 you're fucked either way yeah, it just so starts let's just, becoming yeah. like made up yeah. at, at that point um and then there were you know like five or six other giant items so it was like okay. you know almost a quarter million dollars in debt that we didn't know existed but this is not a PL. this is no, uh yeah it's like <laughs> it's lines written in hi, a, Google, a this is money <laughs> <laughs> by the way we're fucked <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. oh yeah. my gosh so we have the uh you know i i call chris and monet our, our other partners and i'm like hey uh we we're meeting monday okay i think we should do it at your house there you go and a little neutral zone basically yeah. okay and uh i'm i'm gonna let the duncans explain what's going on because i don't know at this point but we we have to meet yeah tomorrow okay and and they're just you know shocked or just say hey, no problem they seem like you know they haven't been there so they don't they might not be as alarmed as you are uh i'm sure they were not as alarmed as i was okay but they definitely I, i'm not <laughs> you've met me I, i'm not great at hiding my emotions <laughs> <laughs> so yeah yeah so I'm, I'm sure the call was something more to the effect of like hey <laughs> gotta meet <laughs> Surprised uh, you didn't ride your motorcycle through their window to meet the them. Thought has crossed my mind. Uh, All yeah. Right, so so let's skip to this meeting. Then. Does yeah. the meeting happen on Monday? Oh the, fuck yeah, the, it does. Uh, sorry, what are the bad partners called? Sorry, the uh, money Ian partners. Ian and called? Tanya are, are What's their, their, their last names? name? Uh, you know, I or guess let's fuck, say it's all public. Yeah, Ian and Tanya Duncan. Okay, I just yeah. I'm not trying to get anybody in trouble. I just no, want to be I mean, able you to. Can, say, you okay. can fucking Google this. So shit. the, so all, the Duncan. I just want to for ease of the interview. So the Duncans agree to this meeting. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so everybody yeah. shows up and, and you know, I'll let me set, I want to set the scene. Mm. Like, what time of day are we talking here? Got the candles out. Yeah. And nice, uh, <laughs> are Chianti. we talking lunch? Is this a breakfast this meeting? Was an evening meeting. I think evening. it was uh, 6 p.m. So you had yeah. to go through another day. Sure did. <laughs> yeah. I can't imagine you with that. With, like. with Ian in the building the whole fucking day, too. So that oh, was great. Right. Yeah, oh, he, shit. He decided to show up to work that day. It was a shocker. Weird. And you uh-huh. guys just ignoring each other all day? Ah, uh, no, no. He, he kept kind of. It's like, hey, man, you know, this is going to be a rough meeting. Like, yeah, fucking is. Uh, <laughs> You're like, I just want to have the meeting. I, I still I don't know what the fuck is happening. Yeah. Um, yeah, just real awkward, brief conversations. Okay. And, uh, 
So we. Uh, so yeah. I, listen, if my podcast was a reality show, this would span so many episodes. Yeah. But I'm going to let you go. We, yeah, we just got to get moving yeah. to the meeting. But I, I would just have loved this is cameras. Day three of five years. In the- <laughs> Oh my gosh, amazing. <laughs> but just in the brewery that day would have been the best reality television. Oh, wait till you hear about the following weeks. Okay. All right. Uh, so you go to the meeting on Monday. It's Monday uh, evening. Um, there are six of you there. Does yep. uh, your yep. wife goes as well? Yep. Okay. And how does it start? What happens? So Emma and I get there before the Duncans do. And uh, we basically say like, yeah, there's, there's apparently a bunch of debt that we didn't know about. And we still have no idea how, where, what, when, why. And I guess the Duncans are going to tell us. Mm-hmm. So they, you know, they show up fashionably late. And uh, how late? Uh, probably just 15, setting the 15 scene. 15 minutes oh, or something. Okay. Just right. enough to piss I us off. I thought it was going to go full nervous. asshole mode, like hour and a half later. Uh, that comes later in yeah. the story. That's chapter two. <laughs> okay. Um, All right. So, you know, a few minutes late. Go on. Yeah. So th- they show up and <laughs> basically they sit down and they're like, so the business uh, is failing and, uh, we're like, we've got tons of debt, so we're just going to close the business down in June and like uh, go bankrupt. And that's it. Just keep yeah, it that was simple. Like, that was like the opener. Okay. And, and Emma and I and the Johnsons are just like, the fuck? Right. <laughs> like, we, like you, you can't just say we're closing the business. Like, yeah, we, yeah. We were looking forward to spring and summer, like, you know, Friday. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. how did this happen? You know, they, they kind of start getting into a brief explanation but there's just nothing concrete and they keep going back to like this is our plan for closing this is our plan for closing we're like we're, we are, have there's not no voted plan to close. Yet. yeah yeah like this requires a unanimous vote yeah like y- y'all own 42 percent. i own 42 percent. the johnsons own the rest like right. we have to vote on this and we need to know what we're voting on yeah yeah um and every time we tried to get a specific answer to something it was just like well you're just fucking trying to blame us <sighs> and you know of course like, you're like i don't even know what i'm blaming yeah, you like, for yeah, exactly yet. i'm like well, for what <laughs> like i still don't see a tax statement like you just have a number written on a piece of paper yeah like this isn't some old timey <laughs> yeah. madman job interview like this there's is, an irs letter somewhere for that yeah. has this information well and that's the thing that we're confused about too okay because occasionally not occasionally all the fucking time we'd get like letters from the uh odr or irs like you know you owe two hundred dollars four hundred dollars okay yeah, and it was always like, oh, yeah, we paid the wrong amount, or we were, you know, late by day, whatever. Which happens. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. But I'm thinking, like, if they send me these letters for 200 bucks, Where's the big one? Where, where are the letters for, like... <laughs> 140 All this money. More money than I had literally made. Yeah. In, in the entirety of running Flat Tail. Maybe in your life. At this point, I made more money at Blockbuster <laughs> than I did at running my right. own fucking brewery for nine years. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, and, and this is, of course, you know, uh, 2019. And one of the, I couldn't believe they used this fucking phrase, but Ian at one point just, this is a fucking witch hunt. They, they, like, they, did you really, seriously, bud? Did like, they? Come oh on. my gosh. Uh, yeah. So they end up getting pissed off and storming out of the meeting. S- wow. Yeah. But really yeah. everyone's just asking for evidence. Just yeah. show us the thing. And yeah. and and also at this point still not willing to share a QuickBooks file. No. Yeah. Oh, the QuickBooks. Like just, that's just a, show me a file. That's show central me a, to this plot. Think, <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Okay, so they storm out. This yeah. is a Monday night. Mm-hmm. And and what happens next? So it's Emma and I and the Johnsons and we I mean it feels like we sat at the table in silence for, you know, hours. It was probably seconds or minutes, but yeah. we're all sitting there and, you know, we're just like, what, what do we do? Right. What do we do now? Because everything is wrong. Right. Uh, we, we still don't know why we still, you know, they just like, well, we weren't making money, so we didn't pay taxes. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yep. So we'll just sell everything and, you know, hopefully we can pay off the debt. It's like, well, you know, dude, you don't owe your dad $180,000 in right. brewing equipment loans. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Like this. I'm, I can't just call up my dad and be like, thanks, pops. By the way, that mm-hmm. money you thought you were getting back. Oh, <laughs> it's gone. Got a good one for you. <laughs> so. All right. So at least fast forward a little yeah. bit to. So, First of all, tell me it's awkward for days, and then, oh, but yeah. but at some point you have to have gotten to the bottom of something. 
Yeah. Uh, so the next day. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, Good. I show up to the brewery at like two or three in the morning and I just start ripping open file cabinets because, okay. you know, my thought is like people keep things in file cabinets still. <laughs> <laughs> These partners are from another generation, Justin. Okay. Uh, that was my hope anyway. <laughs> because I swear to God, I, th- I thought you were going to be like, so I go there and I guess their password on the computer and I dive in. Oh, yeah. Trust but me. No, I tried. But no. File cabinets. Uh, okay. File cabinets. Anyhow, yeah. hopefully so you found something. I, I, I'm just trying to find P&Ls and shit. And I did. I found a bunch of P&Ls. Um, and so that's what I did for, for like ugh, weeks. I, just I would show just, up before them. I, I would basically get to work when the pub was closing. Yeah, okay. And just work all night, or I'd get in at two or three in the morning and work until like eight or nine a.m. and put the stuff back so they didn't know that you were you're basically no, doing mean, forensic accounting. Y- y- <laughs> My you forensic know. accountant will disagree with that, <laughs> but um, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, uh, but put everything back so that they were they didn't know you were doing it. I yeah, assume. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't like a conscious effort to like hide it. It was like these are my files. Well, like, I understand I'm that, but I'm thinking it. that you're maybe trying to keep them from hiding them from you, I so you did at least not want to be in the room with them at that point because it it was clearly a veil had shattered and you know for me that wasn't just the reality of of this money being owed it was the reality that this motherfucker that was in my fucking wedding party did this yeah probably you know and of course we don't know we don't have concrete evidence at this point but it's pretty goddamn obvious when people react that way yeah um, so I wanted to, well, but I, I guess you're saying that, but I still don't know what is obvious just so you know, to me, it's obvious that something is fishy and that there's like tax evasion that they're pissed off about you questioning them about. Yes. I just want you to know that. So sure. at this point in the story, I'm that dumb. I'm just like, the only <laughs> thing that's obvious is that they've done something fucked up. I mean, when you worked in the same building as someone for a decade, you get pretty comfortable yeah. with their tells yeah, and okay. you know it was that it was the personal side of things but it was also just the everything we're asking for is so easy yeah all of this yeah. stuff is available and it should be on right. site in the brewery so what do you find in these file cabinets uh the, the first thing was a bunch of p l's and balance sheets and you know looking at those and then going back to the ones that have been emailed and like the this is the same quarter with different numbers Okay. That's not a thing that should happen. Got it. Yeah. Um, and so over the course of the next couple of weeks, you know, I, I had a conversation with my warehouse manager, Jim, like, I need you to find anything in any cabinet that says anything about tax debt, anything about any debt, just yeah. anything with a negative number on it. I need you to give that to me. Yeah. And he was actually the one that found uh, some of the first, you know, not red flag, like fucking red sail ship, like the whole goddamn thing is painted goddamn red. Uh, and, and that big first document was this, uh, printed out email, which why Tanya did this at some point is still beyond me, but it was this multi-page email back and forth with our accountant about, uh, basically like how, how do we get rid of the debt from these other businesses we own? Oh yeah. And it was every business except flat tail. Oh, uh huh. And then there's like a list of credit cards and there are 12 credit cards and some of them have like credit card for La Bistro, but really for this business. <laughs> so they were cooked books. They were really like the definition of two sets of books. Yeah. So what I mean, long story short, like one of the, the biggest things we ended up finding out is, is a lot of what they were doing was they, they had this central payroll company that they owned. Or that at least they own. Yes, that that's what it was billed as. Okay, and I'm I'm kind of jumping forward and backward at the same time. My Italian senses are starting to there tingle. You go. Yeah, you're getting some good <laughs> business ideas, aren't you? <laughs> yeah the the payroll shell company. Mm, okay, mm-hmm. go on. So they had this uh, DCV Duncan Culinary, um, who also owes us money, uh, <laughs> and it was our understanding, and this is how it was billed to us, that like they have this central payroll company. So all of their restaurants are paid out of this one company. All employees of all of the restaurants are employees of DCV. Okay. So that way, if someone at flat tail needs to cover a shift at aqua, they can do that without having two sets of paperwork. Okay. All that. And you know, uh, the appeal being young and naive. Oh yeah. Fishy as fuck. This is one of those red flags we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you know, again, at 22, 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, this doesn't mean anything to me. I'm thinking like, great, I have people to manage the money for me. I don't right. know shit about it's that. I just awesome. want to make beer. Yeah. Um, so what they were doing is they were taking money ostensibly for like taxes and payroll. And that went to DCV. And then it was supposed to go to the relevant agency uh, or the employee. What they were actually doing was taking money from Flattail way in excess of what we actually owed. And mm. then also not paying taxes. Mm. Yeah. Oh, so the tax bill in some part of the story is also going to be real. Oh, yes, but... I was expecting to hear that the tax thing's nothing. It's just a bunch of embezzlement or something, but no. But thankfully for us, the tax bill is for DCV, not the brewery. Got it. Yeah, so they were telling us that we were behind on these taxes, and that's why we never got the letters. Okay. Because it was their company that legally owed the taxes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, real quick, uh, if you need a, a great brewing software, go to Beersmith.com. You can get your uh, free 30-day web trial. Uh, Beersmith 3, it's amazing. You, you also can brew like Dave Marley of Uvu with Beersmith Brewing Software. There's a new button. Um, just click on Embezzlement Check, and it does a little scan. <laughs> Beersmith is in, fantastic. It's Beersmith 3. By the way, that was the smoothest transmission, or transition like that? ever. Like butter. I'm trying to do the new, like, uh, just throw the ad mm-hmm. in wherever, oh, even if it. it doesn't fit. Yeah, yeah, no, great. <laughs> Thank you. Beersmith You're will good. not steal money from you. Exactly. Probably. Beersmith will, Brad, at Brad Smith and Beersmith will never steal money yeah. from you. In fact, he's so secure in his uh, product that he gives you a free 30-day trial. Oh, my God. He did it again. <laughs> all right. So, all right. Wow. Yeah, so now yeah. you're finding out that this shell yeah. company, let's just call it what it is, is basically funneling money out of flat tail. We, we did confirm that a little bit later, but, okay. but it was, you know, looking at these bank statements we found. You're starting to and, piece this together. Yeah, because, you know, I just I pulled up a payroll report. Sure. And uh, one of the things we did find in the file cabinets were old bank statements. Okay. And I'm like... We, they, boy, for... for go yeah, on. Go sm- on. Smart and There's dumb a lot of paper here. Wow. Yeah. It, it, it was really like, you know, at the beginning we were like, God, how could they be so dumb about this? And then we were like, well, you know, they fucking fooled us for a decade and four different business partners over that time that were all in their 40s and 50s and never noticed it either. So they did a few things right. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I was looking at bank statements... And our payroll says we had, you know, 80 grand in payroll this month, but we transferred 120. Okay. You know, so that was immediately. Wow. Yeah. Uh, made it pretty obvious. So I, I did my math and on my own, I came up with a number of about $400,000. In misappropriated funds. Correct. So not in total, like some of it was legit payroll. Yeah. You're talking about oh, yeah. an overage. Yeah. Of, in how many years? Uh, at it, that time, that was about eight years of uh, oh god, yeah, bank statements. So, in other words, Flattail was doing quite well, yeah. and you didn't know it. So, because I, by the way, I've known you through most of that yeah, time, yeah. and we talk business, uh, and you'd be like, "Yeah, I mean, it's." I'm glad we're here. <laughs> but, <laughs> but as you've said on this very show, I've maybe taken home ten thousand yeah. dollars total. So. But you guys, you might have actually been able to get paid so all those is, years. This is like simultaneously a silver lining and the most painful part of this whole thing. And, you yeah. know, one, one of the first things I did when we when we won our case was call up Kyle and Dave and George, you know, all of the people that were like in Jim. Jim's going to fucking be real pissed if I don't mention him. Mm-hmm. Um, also, in case you're playing the drinking game again, Jim, Meisel, 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 Meisel. Oh, Meisel. Four shot. By the way, um, this is the new definition of getting misled. Oh fuck yeah, real hard. <laughs> I can't believe you invented it and then reinvented it. Yeah, yeah, God. Uh, but you know, looking back, it's like we we did do it right, and not only did we do it right. Looking at these numbers, like 2012, and, and also we we could not get any uh, concrete like paperwork, bank statements, etc. Before 2012. Yeah, and. The first two years we were in business, you know, I I would guess that that was probably when the majority of this was happening. You were probably doing great, but being but they were telling you things weren't great. Yes, and 
again, like as a super young guy and, you know, on one hand, I'm not going to defend myself because I was naive Mm -hmm. and I did miss a lot, Mm -hmm. but also anyone who has ever been in a situation where they have been set up or groomed like this can, can attest to the fact that it really doesn't take a lot when you believe in something or you want to believe in something and you see success. And that was the key was we were always so close, but not quite there. Right. And that was what kept things moving. It's a great story. Um, yeah. That you're so yeah, close. Exactly. Just and, keep you know, it up. I, I'm seeing, you know, 600 cases going out the, the door, but I also knew that we were selling, you know, 999 six packs and the yeah. margin on that was, was nothing. Did you ever, and again, this is not mm-hmm. me trying to call you out on anything. You know, the more you preface Did that, you? <laughs> the more it sounds like you are. <laughs> Did you ever look at the daily numbers at the restaurant? At, at the you know, brewery, and be like, yes. oh man, we did, you know. At the restaurant, I got handed reports. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah, and you know, I'd see these huge days, but then I'd also see bad days. November, sure. December, yeah. January, and February. It's easily, it is very easily explainable in a restaurant that, you know, because look, and you hear it in the news, those of you listening who aren't, um, you know, restaurant owners or whatever, um, how small the margins are, yeah. right? And it's true. And then, but it's also easy to go, well, then why does anybody do it? There's clearly, we know some rich people who own restaurants and that's all true too. Uh, but what I would say is the, the $400,000 that you ended up accounting for, at least at that point in time, um, that's a great profit for a one owner business, uh, right? Like that's the yeah. margin. And it's so tight that you could easily see that embezzled away and not notice if you're talking yeah. about a span of time. And I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely giving you some some credit here because that is how slim the margins are. That like that amount of money over a period of time, shit. Yeah. It's just, and, it's just, and, it's know, just we, we, how it goes. I was seeing new things happening in the restaurant. I was seeing money go into the business, uh, you know, from, from an outward look. Yeah. So nothing was shocking in those first years and that's when the vast majority of all of this stuff happened right um oh i see so it really did yeah yeah yeah. i mean 2012 we probably would have netted a quarter of a million dollars i mean we were able to find over uh if my memory serves me which i think it does over 200 grand in direct theft in just that year so much money but also yeah they were also taking out these huge unapproved uh, like shark loans. Mm-hmm. So they would take out like a hundred grand at 30%. Uh huh. Without having signatures from the other partners. Right. Which, you know, was not legal by our operating agreement. Sure. We, we didn't know about the vast majority of these loans. Um, so shady. Yeah. Yeah. So not only was there all of this actual money missing, but the interest on these loans they were taking out was massive. Right. We, we could have been one of the most, we might have been probably were one of the most profitable brew pubs in the fucking state in the early 2010s. Wow. I mean, no one was bringing home hundreds of I think of you bought me lunch there like twice and I felt yeah. real bad about it. That's how <laughs> tight I thought things were because I'm used That's to that too. I thought things were. Same here. And I'm like, man, yeah. thanks for the cheeseburger, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I only had to cut off a pinky for that. <laughs> and you're like, meanwhile, someone has a Cadillac. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, it was a Lincoln Navigator. Okay, but, uh, right. They sold it for good show. God. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, basically, like, we, we were going through this kind of sleuthing midnight shit, okay. and I had my, my crew of longtime employees there who also hilariously, like, I couldn't tell them everything because, one, I didn't know everything, and also I didn't want to be like, yeah, these motherfuckers are robbing us blind. But, you know, I had to talk, like, something's wrong. Yeah. And this is what has happened so far. And every single one of them was like, yeah, man, we, we fucking got you. And also fuck those guys. Right. Like there was no hesitation. <laughs> wow. Which also should have told me something. I mean, and, and again, like everyone knew Ian was a fucking asshole, but mm, yeah, you, opportunity you make, and you just go for it. Well, and you know, people forget that like the, the con and con man is confidence. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. These people are boisterous and exuberant and they, they, you want to be around them, even if you don't really like them. That's right, right. how they convince you to do this. Show. Totally. So we're doing our sleuthing and we're pulling up documents. And uh, that lasts basically March through about the first week of April until, you know, and back and forth emails. And at this point, we've already contacted a lawyer. They don't know that, but we've got one on retainer. And um, 
things are very heated between the parties at this point. But everyone's still working together. Kind of. I mean, yeah, Ian okay. wasn't really doing much for okay. the past year. But the, but the so. restaurant's open. Yeah, and, yeah. It's okay. open. He's yeah. coming in for an hour or two every yeah. day. Okay. Uh, he even went back into the kitchen and was like flipping burgers one day. And everyone's just like, what the fuck are you doing here? Just, like, just you, putting you, on a good show. Yeah, like, you don't know how to do this anymore. Come yeah, on, man. Yeah. No one's buying this. Um, and so we, we eventually got to a point where we were like, you need to get the fuck out. Like, okay, obviously yeah. something is wrong here. And they refused to resign, went back and forth a bunch. Yeah. And then finally, we, we got them to basically, like, send an email saying that they were resigning as managing members. Okay. Um, and then shit got real fun. <laughs> because as soon as that email goes out and they stop showing up to work. Yes. Uh, suddenly, uh, <laughs> I think it started with, uh, I get a call from our Cisco rep. And uh, we had one big local food vendor and then Cisco for a lot of our like napkins, but also a ton of our dry goods. Very high percentage of the, uh, you know, scratch ingredients that we built shit with came from Cisco. And uh, Aaron calls me up and he's like, hey, uh, so we're, we're going to need to, you know, start a new account for you, obviously, before we do your delivery this week. And I'm like, what do you what? Yeah, well, you know, Ian called up and canceled the Cisco account. Oh, so now he's just <laughs> lashing uh-huh. out. So he, he cancels the account of our biggest food vendor. Uh, he sends an email to our landlord saying that we will not be renewing our lease. Wow. And then they take approximately $20,000 out of the checking account. Okay. So now yeah. they're not even, like, attempting to yeah. hide things. Yeah. Let's pause right there. I think this is a good time. To <laughs> this is not a good time, Justin. <laughs> to take it's a, a bad time. I'm having a great time. Uh, <laughs> when we come back, more that is Dave's horrible life right here on The Session. Welcome back to The Session. You're still hanging out with me, Justin, and uh, my guest today, Dave Marliov from New Spring Brewing. New Spring. Did I get it right? Yeah, you did. Oh, and the Marley name off. too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Good. So don't A get, for effort and results this time. Don't get used to it. I won't. So before we go on with the story, and and I promise you, listeners at home, I'm going to get us through to the end of the story. I just I like details, but I also I have to do a little segue right now because no brewing network show with Dave is complete without a little bit of chaos, right? And so. Those of you who've been listening for a long time know that I think on Dave's first appearance, or after Dave's first appearance, to be fair, the wallet phone was invented. Indeed. And that's when your brewer at the time, Sean? Sean Martin um, of Ninkasi Brewing Company. Hi, Jamie, Sean's boss. Got so hammered at that show yeah. that he picked up his... We, we found him on the street calling an Uber... With his wallet oh, held oh, to his you're, face. You're, oh, come on, man. You that was this. basically no, it. Uh, JP found him in an alley eating bean dip with his fingers. But not before and finding then him. Oh, mm-hmm. you asked him if he was driving home. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, no. And he said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to call a cab. Uh, and he couldn't find his phone. <laughs> so you asked him if, if he uh, wanted, wanted him to you know call his phone. And so you call his phone. <laughs> yeah. And he fucking pulls his wallet out and, puts and it answers his, face. his wallet. <laughs> there was like a whole voicemail of you like, yeah, yeah, no, ma- your, your phone's in your pocket, but uh, <laughs> you're, you're talking to your wallet right now. <laughs> so, yeah. so wallet phone was invented. Uh-huh. So there's that story about Dave. And then Dave has been known to get tattoos like for no reason at all. And usually for a dumb reason, to be honest with you. Yeah, hey, hey, there's a reason. <laughs> it's just real fucking dumb. So I thought it would be funny... If Dave and I got wallet phone tattoos on tonight's show, and I'm not talking about, you know, henna here. On my face. <laughs> right fucking there. So I've arranged for mm-hmm. a tattoo artist, my girlfriend, to be honest, to tattoo us with wallet phones. What do you think, Dave? Are you, are you in on this? Yeah, why the fuck not? <laughs> <laughs> and are you going to get in trouble again when you get home, like you normally do when you come to the brewing let me, network? Let me just look at my phone real quick and see if Emma's texting me <laughs> right like, now. Don't do it. Please don't um, do it. Oh, Charlie from uh, Chicha Brewing in Salem, who was a guest on your show when he was working for Logston. Uh, okay. He yeah. says that he's nervously eating his mustache again right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, 
Uh, and as a matter of fact, t- if you think I'm lying, the tattoo artist is walking into the studio right now to set up a... Uh, Hi, person I just met. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think that uh, toward the end of the program or during this uh, conversation, we're going to get wallet phone tattoos. And I'm going to do it with you this time. This is how committed I am. And, and you're getting it on your neck, right? <laughs> I'm getting it That's as a teardrop on my face. <laughs> I actually haven't decided where I'm going to get it. I have to get it in a place that's conducive to still being on the microphone, which sucks. I think that means I have to get it like on my arm or something. Yeah, I, I don't really it, want I, it I there. I think you do. If I'd it's going on it, my fucking arm, it's going on your fucking arm or face. But your again. arm is full of dumb shit already. What are you talking? <laughs> well, yeah, your logo's on there, so that's fucking true. <laughs> yeah, so there's the exact. That was Susie's fault. <laughs> but I can't even just drop my pants and get it on my leg because I'm also at a bar that I own that mm. had, doesn't even have an yeah. HR department. Yeah. And it's the, it's the office of the people who work here. Do, do, do you have a stamp yet? I mean, is that a thing? That, that's a possibility. <laughs> oh, God, a little tiny wallet mm-hmm. phone yeah. right in the center. Love it. Love it. <laughs> that would be pretty funny. Uh-huh. Uh, it's going to end up somewhere that I can get it covered up anyway, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do that on the next show. Uh, my girlfriend's a tattoo artist, so I can just get this done. Uh, um, all right. So I just want you folks at home to know that at some point during tonight's program, we're probably getting uh, wallet phone tattoos. Yeah, for the record, I had no fucking clue this was happening. Right, yeah. yeah. This is just yet another bad decision and a series of bad decisions. I don't know also, why you I, keep coming down here. I love you, Emma, baby girl. You know you my world. <laughs> all right. So uh, they've they've left. Your partners have... Your, your, your stealing partners have left the company, but... On their way out, mm-hmm. they start shutting down accounts, and they steal twenty grand from the bank account. Yeah, approximately. Uh, uh, and you and you still can't put a stop to this behavior. And I mean that genuinely. Yeah. Like legally, there's nothing. You well, know. so here's the problem: is they they opened all of these bank accounts without uh, oh, right. having you know the appropriate additional signers, which is so illegal. Sure yeah. is. Yeah, when I went into Key and basically said like you're going to put me on this account. <laughs> Uh, I looked at their original documents and it listed like 200% ownership in the company. Mm. I'm like, you, you guys opened an account and you didn't even, like, you that's just, a that's not a number that exists. And, <laughs> and if you you're going to falsify a document, yeah. at least math. Yeah, right. Yeah, a little mathing <laughs> would have been appreciated. As the accountants. Yeah, so we, we spent weeks and months trying to get access to every bank account we could. And, you know, eventually we did. And then as soon as I did, I opened up new bank accounts and moved the money over so that we had actual control yeah so that was really the point where it was like i went from knowing how to run a brewery uh to kind of getting into the restaurant side over the last year to the point where you know i i was able to cover a number of day-to-day tasks but definitely was not like a restaurateur sure uh to like i have to fucking run this whole thing Wow. Yeah. And, and, you know, it wasn't like I have to fucking run this whole thing. Oh, shit. I got to tell my brewery is working overtime. Like, I did not have a head brewer. I didn't have an assistant brewer. Yeah. Yeah. So I was producing 100% of the beer for Flat Tail while also now learning, to- learning how to, like, oversee the restaurant operations. Right. And, you know, our, our head chef at the time, George, did a killer job helping us out. Kyle was absolutely incredible. Jim kept the warehouse running. Dave kept the beer sales going. So it, it was not something I did alone by any means. Yeah. And our entire staff was incredible. You know, I, I, I still am friends with a, a ton of our staff members. Uh, years later, uh, I was lucky enough to have employees that had worked for me for, you know, the entire 10 years right. when we closed down. A number of them. Yeah, yeah. So I, I had a great crew, um, and Kyle really ran the restaurant. Uh, but obviously at this point I was no longer willing to have someone just like do shit while I fucked off in the brewery. So yeah, it was a a hell of a trial by fire. Yeah. And at first we felt great because we're, we're looking at the money coming in and and we're making money. I took a paycheck for a month, uh, which was awesome. <laughs> right. Bought some groceries. It's actually, things are actually working. Yeah. And, you know, uh, April, even with the 20 grand that just went disappearing from our bank account, like yeah. we were paying all our bills. And then May, we got a couple surprise bills. Yeah. That were a setback. And then June, we got a couple more surprise bills. Okay. And then it, it really quickly became apparent, like, this list is not the list. I we, see. we had, you know, $5,000 for 
uh, ODR from this court or five thousand dollars from this other agency. These are taxes and government here. stuff. Okay. Taxes, yeah, vendor yeah. bills. We had like I, I, I believe it was sixty thousand dollars owed to one of our independent vendors. Wow. Yeah. I mean, just huge sums of money. I see. So we're taking all of this profit that should be going into the savings account for winter. And having to dump it into this ever expanding list of new unknown debts. Yeah. Um, and, you know, by August, it was like, this is not going great. Right. You know, we, we were still making it, but we had no idea when the surprise bills would stop coming. Yeah. And they just didn't. Okay. And, you know, we, we had one of the slowest fall and winters. Uh, ever in Corvallis at that point. And this was very much pre-COVID, but we were already starting to see a slowdown in the industry. I mean, 2016 was kind of like the peak. Yeah. And it really started crawling down after that. And then winter of 2019, COVID fears start rising. And the second a whiff of, you know, a global viral pandemic came out, people in in a you know largely liberal college town stopped going out as much yeah well before we knew the name covid right you you know people were just not going out and you know it it was every restaurant in town dried up yeah yeah, worst winter and january hits uh we actually uh my my in-laws had this timeshare and uh paid for us basically uh our room in in like uh, france for a week i had never been to europe it was my longest vacation hmm. since we started Flat Tail, and I think of all time at that point, uh, we went for 10 days. I bet you didn't enjoy one hour of it. It was fucking amazing. <laughs> oh, good for you. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> Paris kind of sucked. Like, uh, Fuck the per- that. Paris is amazing. Dude, I, fucking Emma, like, she can do the accent. She learned a bunch of French before You we don't went. have to do that there. I, I sound like fucking Brad Pitt in Inglorious <laughs> Bastards. I'm like, bonger. <laughs> yeah. Like, give me one of them crescent rolls. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But Vincennes, the little town we were in, was amazing. There was this like you little... stayed in Vincennes. Yeah, yeah. Is that uh, how you say it? Yeah, Jesus, one of my best friends lives in Vincennes. Yeah, there was this yeah. little Belgian beer bar yeah. right by where we stayed, and we went there every night. Yeah. Uh, just incredible time. Mm-hmm. And then on our, our flight home, this is a little fun side story. Um, we we had been talking to the couple behind us a little bit, and they were traveling from uh, China, mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, the husband and the couple ends up like blacking out on the plane and <laughs> oh, having no. like major respiratory issues. And the the flight uh, attendants keep saying like, oh yeah, he just had too much to drink. And his wife is like, he had one glass of wine. He's not drunk. Okay. Like he, there's something, something wrong, wrong with yeah. him. Like this is not, and then like straight up out of a movie, they do the, is there a doctor on board? Call? Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, okay. I played one this on TV. A weird. And we get back, and I was fucking wiped out for three days. Could not get out of bed. Uh, and then ended wow. up getting what, you know, I now am fairly certain my doctor thinks was long COVID. Oh, no. Uh, yeah. So all of 2020. Oh, wow. This is okay. Yeah. Was basically also with long COVID. So that was fun. Um, Did Flat Tail close in 2020? Yeah. So we, we get back from our trip. And, uh, oh, so it was open while you were gone. So, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we were gone for a week okay. over yeah. Christmas. Yeah. So we didn't, we didn't miss too much. Got it. And January was just beyond painful. Okay. Uh, February, super painful. And then by February, obviously, everyone started to get scared. Yeah. Because, you know, we don't, we had, Sure. Uh, it's easy to forget how little information there was. Nobody knew. When and by March, started. it was sort of mandated. That yeah, it was like was fucking everyone's yeah. going to be zombies, maybe, or it's yeah. nothing, maybe. We have no idea. Um, so, so you close in what, March 2020? You close in February? March 16th was yeah. our last day. And then you never opened again? No. Yeah. I and, you know, it, yeah. people kept like, well, why don't you do to go? And I'm like, my fucking overhead is like 80K a month. Yeah. Like, yeah. I cannot possibly sell enough to go chicken tenders and yeah. cheeseburgers We're to just, make 80 over. Like, yeah. this is not possible. Yeah. So we, we had this, like, handshake deal with our, our landlords at the time. And uh, I, I had told them, like, listen, we have a 140-seat restaurant. That is not something that's going to exist anytime soon, successfully, yeah. like in our world. Yeah. So I wanted to move into just the brewery half of the building. We had a 10,000 square foot building. I basically wanted to keep, I think it was like 3,500 or 4,000 square feet. Just the brew house. Yeah. Just yeah. Brew house well, and enough space yeah, in the back, yeah, like obviously. receiving bay to set up a little like a speakeasy kind of tasting room thing. Uh, so like three days after I, I have this handshake deal with uh, one of our landlords, uh, we get an eviction notice. 
Ah, oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, just uh, literally came into work and it was posted on the front door. So they weren't as cool as they were at the Apparently handshake. Not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that then turned into <clears throat> 30 days to get the entire brewery and restaurant cleared out wow uh, okay literally would not give us any extra time that's crazy because it's yeah. not like someone else is moving in building still empty right oh see that's really fucked up mm-hmm. man yeah that's your life is what that is yeah yeah and uh you know it it was crazy because i i didn't really ever i still haven't really had time to process that whole thing yeah you want to do that on the air right now you want I'd me to ask not. you some like th- i've been to a lot of therapists. Uh, i'm an ugly crier uh, <laughs> yeah i mean i can get to the yeah. bottom of this pretty quick <laughs> no, trust me i know where the bottom is <laughs> don't want to go there yeah yeah there's that's, not a long enough rope that's fair uh yeah so like i i spent the first two days basically thinking it was a mistake i'm like this this must have been just for the maybe. restaurant side yeah the, maybe yeah, it was just a like, paperwork a, thing you know clerical yeah. error yeah uh I quickly find out it's not because you called them and said hey or you know yeah, the, the landlords never answered their phones okay. and then i after calling many many times got an angry email from their lawyer saying like no you talk to us okay uh yeah. so you know i told them like this is a ten thousand square foot building that we've been in for 11 years yeah I, I can't get all this shit out in 30 days and they said like cool well whatever's left you know, we own yeah we we hadn't paid rent for you know a month or two at that point and they were yeah, like yeah, yeah just give us all of our back rent even though covid uh, uh you know yeah. help was about to come yeah and would have paid them back in full for that totally uh and i was like yeah i, I obviously can't do that and they basically said well great this uh, is your day bonehead move yeah so it, it was I, I worked 16 hours a day every day that month uh minimum Getting except for up. one i took one half day because i you know i was what'd like, you do on that half day did you get drunk slept. Or, okay <laughs> and probably lots of gin yeah, yeah yeah i turned into like a elderly british woman when i'm sad um, i could see that yeah, yeah, yeah. uh-huh can't do the accent though don't yeah, ask that's fine uh so yeah you know it was like me jim uh lots of employees came to help uh the right, o- so let me get to the bottom of this let right. me let me sum some of this yeah. up here so you got to get out the 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 landlords say it's over um you've been you've been uh dicked over by the partners you don't know where that's going to go there's basically bankruptcy all around but you're you're taking all the equipment out i i assume just storing it somewhere is that would that end up at your house yeah so long story short we you know i sold some equipment uh and then for the brew house i ended up meeting the new owners of Kalapuya brewing in albany okay uh, which ironically the original owners that they bought out were the original founders of flat tail with oh. the duncans and then i ended up bu- buying those guys out to own flat tail okay um and you know caitlin and i sat down and i was like you've got this new business that you bought and you have probably like the worst fucking brew house in the state okay i have this beautiful equipment and nowhere to put it yeah can we figure something out so we moved all of the uh, brew house over there before we had anything signed. Okay. It, it was just like... That was another handshake deal. Yeah, I just so figure we, this we out. We came up with this like lease back to basically allow me to produce beer in the building okay. under their license. Okay. So as a contract brewer, but with me doing the brewing. Um, and this is still in 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we... we somehow get all of our shit out there uh charlie came down and slept on my back porch for like a week okay uh between jim charlie and i we rigged every tank in that building ourselves except for the two that two towns bought which uh a two well- towns cider up there yeah yep. yeah um they hired a professional rigging company that dropped one of our tanks and broke our glycol lines okay. uh <laughs> <laughs> whoops yep thanks for helping out john yeah um yeah so we got everything out okay so your plan then is to start a new brewery project with this equipment that you yeah. own, right? Yeah, on a and there's clearly no scale. dispute from your embezzling partners about who owns what equipment. You're just taking it, right? Yeah, like, I mean, the, we didn't have time, yeah. to really come it's up just with what it is. that much of a plan. Okay. Yeah, it, it was like, okay, this is you know, I got a hold of Chris and Monet. Like, this is the plan. I think this is what we're going to do. So at that point in 2020 mm-hmm. is when New Spring is born. Like, yeah. literally right after. Yeah, and we so we, that I didn't we know. We skipped over the part where okay. we filed the lawsuit in June of 2019. Okay, so and that's I figured when it was that was a good. Filed. And of course, yeah. we'll jump ahead. I, yeah. We don't need every dirty no, detail. No, but it, let's do that now. It, essentially, you in what year 2022 so 2020 23 we, we you finally all, win this lawsuit uh yeah this last june 
So June of 23. Yeah. So so immediately a lawsuit's filed, of course, mm-hmm. uh, between you and the other couple yeah. that, that's on the good side at, against yes. the, uh, the, the, the plaintiffs. The green lightsabers. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, yeah. Um, but this lawsuit goes on and on as they do. Yeah. And then you finally have your day in court this, yeah. this past June. Yeah. And what happens there? Holy fucking shit balls. Yeah. Um, it, it was the most bizarre experience of my life, and it was actually our second time going to court. Okay. Uh, our original trial was scheduled for January, and the morning of trial, you had mentioned QuickBooks earlier. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. were never able to get the full QuickBooks files. Okay. All, all we got were the condensed versions. Yeah. So basically, you see monthly totals, but sure. no individual transactions. Yeah. Well, suddenly, the day of trial, like 2,000 plus pages of QuickBooks files are miraculously found. Yeah. So we so had you to, have to delay. Yeah, we were forced to be the party <laughs> of that course, delayed because you've got to look at all yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, and thank God we did because we found a shit ton more money. Right. So we we finally get back to trial, and you know this is hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal fees. Later, yeah. <clears throat> we remortgaged our house. I had to borrow more money for my dad. Uh, basically, my I've already gotten my inheritance, and it went to uh, our fantastic legal partners. Okay. Were great. Okay. Uh, <laughs> And it was five days long, uh, eight hours a day up until Friday, which I think was 14 by the time we got the verdict. Mm. And I mean, I I don't even. And the verdict is? The verdict is unanimous on over 30 counts of nine charges. Okay. Against the Duncans. Yeah. And they dismissed every counterclaim against us unanimously in addition. Wow. Okay. Which is like something that doesn't happen. <laughs> well, unless it's that it, cut it, and dry. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. You just don't often hear about civil trials. Yeah. Where, yeah. You know, we met the burden of evidence to, to convict them in a criminal trial. So that's what I was going to say. Yeah. This was a civil trial. Yeah. Because my next question jurors. was. And so there's 12. no, they didn't, there was no legal repercussions for those two. Uh, as far as uh, like criminal, sorry, there's no criminal repercussions at, for those at, two. At this time, there are not. Okay, but that's still an ongoing possibility. I'm not going to comment on that. God, I hope so because I'm furious <laughs> already for you. Are okay. you? Are but you on, angry? But on Good. the civil yes. side, yeah, yeah, you're right, yeah. But on the civil side, so you win on all these counts, yeah. which means what? Uh, so the judgment awarded to us was five hundred thirty-two thousand dollars in damages. Okay. Uh, between legal fees, uh, sanctions, we won two different motions for sanctions for the shit they and their lawyers pulled. Mm-hmm. Uh, the total number, uh, I can't remember off the top of my head, but with interest, fees, everything, it's approximately $1.45 million that they owe us. Okay. And will you ever see one penny? I fucking better. Do you uh, think it's possible? Absolutely. Oh, you know, good. They, they they bought a brand new house. Okay. In cash. Oh, this in the is great. Of the because I because of your <laughs> shitty luck, which is worse than my really shitty luck. Don't say that too. Much. I thought the, the end of the story is like, and anyway, they file for bankruptcy yeah. and they live in the Cayman Islands. Like, I mean, that still is a possibility. <laughs> yeah. Right. But like, yeah, we're fighting them through bankruptcy court now. Right. Okay. Yeah, which is an entirely new lawsuit. Yeah. Uh, so you know, I can't talk about all of that because it's now ongoing. But yeah, we, we will yeah. follow them to fucking hell before we give up on it. I'm sure you will. You can fucking take do that they one still to the live in your town? They still live in my house. I say that preemptively. Okay, wait, mm. what? No, because you know I want to take their house. Like that's <laughs> okay, the fucking okay, joke. Okay, Come on, man. Uh, yeah. You lost. It. I was like, <laughs> no, because your stories are so crazy. And I'm like, yeah. do they rent a room from you? <laughs> <laughs> they just squatted. Yeah. I figured it was no big deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I made another mistake. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. no. So we we will. We so expect they still this. live right there, just living their dream, yeah. living their life. Yeah, making you know like a oh. fucking shit ton of money working at the Corvallis Country Club. This is infuriating. Yeah. He, do you want to change mm-hmm. our tattoo right now to like something to do with just murdering the them? <laughs> <laughs> want? Yes. Should? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> That, uh, that might go bad in court. Yeah, a little bit. Little he bit. has a tattoo of us being murdered. Mm. <laughs> I, I was drunk, Your Honor. Judge my kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, wow. Jesus. Yeah. Okay, so, but you finally win this yeah, suit after yeah. years of it going on, a couple years of this going yeah. on. Um, wow. A couple, two, three, three, four. And in the meantime, you start New Spring, which yes. is essentially a contract brewery, but you're the brewer? Yeah. So originally, we were going to set it up as an AP, an alternating proprietorship. Uh, by the way, pour us another one yeah, of your oh beers. Oh, shit. We should do that. We haven't even, yeah, we haven't even gotten through your beers yet, too. So 
Um, by the way, if you want to help Flattail and their legal fees because you love Dave and you love the stories he comes on here to tell, uh, which could keep going, um, go just Google you. just Google uh, search GoFundMe Flattail, and you'll see Justice for Flattail come up as the first uh, search term, and you can uh, read all about it there and see if there's any help that you can do for my man Dave. Is <sighs> how old are you now? You're still only the what twenty. Three. Go fuck yourself, Justin. I'm 35, <laughs> turning 36 st- next month. You're still a baby. Dave's still a baby. Help him in his like never-ending quest to have a career that he likes, which and I, I may will or just, may not work. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> You're supposed to be the motivational one. <laughs> That's uh, I do want to say, like, th- this is a thing that was really fucking hard, in particular, for me to do. I, I, I've been doing charity work for years, and having yeah. to like beg for money... Um, <laughs> from other people is not something I enjoy doing. Uh, oh, you, you can watch the video where I announced it and like I can barely keep one of my eyes open. It was not a fun time. Uh, and obviously I don't have much to offer people in the way of like I, I can't. Socially or emotionally <laughs> or, oh sorry, I didn't mean to finish your sentences yeah. for you. I'm a shell of a human. <laughs> uh, right. But what I am going to do and what you know, this is something that isn't just a hypothetical. It, it is actively happening right now. Is I'm going to keep trying to give back in every way I can as a way of saying thank you for helping me out. Yeah, so yeah. if you don't mind me plugging nope. someone else's fundraiser Please real do. quick. The first way I'm going to do that, and uh, I wanted to get my, my charity ride. If you guys remember, I used to ride from Corvallis to San Diego in a day and raise money for the uh, National Brain Tumor Society every year. Uh, I was going to bring that back, and then I like kind of broke my foot and shit, so that couldn't happen. Um, but what I am doing is I've got this awesome new project called the Raptor Princess Project. No, we don't have a website or anything like that. But no. what I'm doing is I'm, I've brewed this IPA uh, that I have a label for somewhere in here that our lack of assistance will totally find at some point. Yeah. Um, and 100% of the profit <laughs> for this beer... Not just a portion, but 100. Dave's a great business person. Great yeah. Charitable uh, man. Also, accounts that are listening, please, for the love of fuck, buy, buy this beer. entire batch in a week. Yeah. <laughs> I really need to sell out of this fast. What's it um, called? Raptor Princess IPA. Okay. Yeah. And all of the profit from this batch is going to go to the medical fund, the GoFundMe for Erica Leslie Ash. Um, formerly Erica Lafferty, who, if you, if you don't recognize that name, Erica is the incredible fucking superhero of a woman who lost her mother in the Sandy Hook tragedy. And then on top of that unimaginable loss, had to deal with years of insane people showing up to her house, sending her death threats, accusing her of being a fucking crisis actor. The Mm. the most unspeakable, unimaginable shit. And then she was the uh, lead plaintiff in the Alex Jones Sandy Hook trial. And ended up helping secure, you know, one because of, Alex Jones said it, it was all a hoax. Yeah, so it was basically yeah. a defamation trial. Yeah, yeah. It, it was a defamation trial. Yeah. Um, and between her trial and several others, the the total sum that Alex Jones now owes these families is one point five billion dollars. Wow. Yeah. Largest de- defamation judgment in history. Yet he declared fucking bankruptcy. bankruptcy. Yeah. And has yet to pay a single penny, despite the fact that the bankruptcy court has allowed him to spend over $100,000 a month Mm. for living expenses. Mm -hmm. So Erica was diagnosed with a rare form of uh, ocular cancer, or excuse me, lymphoma originally, and then ended up turning into ocular cancer, which um, I'm going to mess up the details, so I'm going to skip them. But either way, this, this amazing superhero is now struggling to pay her own medical bills, even though someone owes her millions and millions and millions of dollars. Sure. So this so f- beer is going to help pay those. And we also are highly encouraging other breweries to do this as well. If you want to brew a Raptor Princess, it can be an IPA. It can be something else. If you want to use uh, you know, our label art as a base, yeah. email me, uh, Dave at NewSpringBeer.com okay. or Raptor Princess Project at gmail.com. And uh, this is all also being done in, in conjunction with the uh, Knowledge Fight podcast, which essentially exists to break down alex jones okay uh dan from knowledge fight was actually an expert witness in the trial okay uh in the depositions 
with Alex Jones, helping the lawyers figure out what he was like lying about. Amazing. Good. Yeah. So yeah. that's how I'm going to try to give back uh, to lessen the burden of shame and guilt for asking all of you to give also me a fuck ton of money. There so, you go. All yeah. right. All right. Let's do that. Also, tell me about the beer that you've just poured us, and then we're going to take a break because I think we're ready for our first tattoo oh, as we wrap up this story. But go on. What is, what's in our glass? Uh, so this is Polka Prince. Mm-hmm. It is a fest beer. Uh, so it's about, I want to say, 90% environment extra light pills. Uh, the remainder is Vienna malt, uh, lagered, fermented at 48, lagered for uh, nine weeks after that. Mm. Uh, two and a half hour boil, mm-hmm. no caramel or anything like that, and it's a hundred percent naturally carbonated with the German spending technique. Oh yeah, yeah. Was that just to save money, or just going for the full traditional thing here? All of the above. Yeah. So, nice. uh, <laughs> nicely done. actually, more beer pro. Oh yeah. Where you should always go for uh, both homebrew supplies and brewery shit if you don't have a local homebrew shop. Thank you. Um, has spooning valves at the time I bought them for like 180 bucks. And what these do is it's like a PRV that allows gas to escape at a very constant metered pressure. So you set it for two PSI, it allows the tank to get up to two and then off gas anything else. Mm -hmm. So I'll, uh, you know, once I get uh, past the original blow off, I'll throw the valve on and ferment at about one or two PSI through the bulk of fermentation. This isn't, you can ferment under pressure to speed up fermentation. That is not a positive thing. What I'm doing is uh, fermenting under a very, very small amount of pressure to kind of slowly get the yeast used to it. And then when I'm down to the last like 10% of attenuation, that's when I start cranking it up to eight pounds. And then when I'm almost at the end, I'll crank it up to about 12, 13, uh, or in this case, 14 to get all of the carbonation. So I'm able to get three volumes of CO2, 100% naturally, saves money on CO2. Uh, obviously way better for the environment, but you get a much yep. tighter lace. You get a, a better head quality, especially if you don't hand bottle these and then put them on the back of a motorcycle and drive down to the studio. But uh, it's something I do to some degree in all of my beers, and for lagers, uh, generally I carbonate 100% that way. Well, even for motorcycle beer, it's delicious. I like this beer. It's great. Yeah, <sighs> nice, dry, crisp finish. Yeah, and this is a collaboration with Common Fields, Corvallis, uh, Dave Deliski, my old sales manager, is the GM there, and our good buddies Jake and Cherish own the place. Uh, also, a huge help throughout the past several years. Okay. All right, let's do this. We're going to take another uh, quick break. Sounds delightful. When we come back, we're going to get the remainder of this story and learn as much as we can about New Spring while we have time and get tattooed, I think. Yay. Hang in there. It's the session. We'll be right back. Since 1979, Williams Brewing has offered the finest equipment and freshest ingredients and the best customer service in the business. Their website features real-time inventory, which means if you can put it in your cart, they can guarantee it'll ship the same day by 4 p.m. on weekdays. Want easy and simple electric brewing? Check out the new Series 2 Mash and Boil, featuring an elevated grain basket so you don't have to calculate sparge water. Williams also features the full Kegland line, everything from Brewzilla to Maltzilla and a huge selection of duo-tight fittings. Looking for a kegerator? Look no further than the Kegland Series X and Plus kegerators, which feature 4 and 8 keg capacity in a compact footprint. And free shipping to the lower 48. Interested in distilling? Look up their proven Williams American bourbon and brandy kits, as well as complete distilling equipment packages and conversion kits for popular systems like the Mash and Boil, Anvil, and the Grainfather. Check them out today. Go to williamsbrewing.com to browse their vast selection. Welcome back to the session. Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, we're here in the studio with Dave Marliov, uh, now of New Spring Brewing. And uh, he's got a new fundraiser beer out called Raptor Princess IPA. Take a look at that. And if you want to get involved in that fundraiser, you can email Dave at Dave at NewSpringBeer.com or Raptor Princess Project at gmail.com. There you go. And you can also search for Erica's GoFundMe. Uh, It's Lafferty or Help Lafferty Beat Lymphoma on GoFundMe. Yeah. And in fact, I just did a quick Google of that. You can just go GoFundMe Help Lafferty. 
and you'll find that. Boom. Too. Yeah, it pops up right away. So uh, while we're getting to the end of this story, which I think we've mostly covered and, and getting into the new spring beers, we're also setting up for our tattoos, uh, something I've threatened to do on the air for a long time, but I figured this time, why not make it finally happen? So Dave and I are about to get wallet phone tattoos. You can see this on our YouTube if you're uh, listening to the podcast right now. You can go back, and uh, it's happening live in the studio right now. Um, our, our tattoo artist is getting prepped, and we're both getting wallet phones. <laughs> what is a wallet phone, you ask? Well, <laughs> well, it's when you've had a few, and uh, someone's calling you, and instead of pulling out your flip phone, you pull out your flip wallet, and you hold it to your face. Who would do this, you ask? <laughs> Pretty Flat much tail. everybody on Flat Tail's team at the time of the, at that recording. So when Dave came in and I said, hey, do you want to get tattooed on the air today? I said, I didn't even thought about what we want. And Dave just looks at me like I'm an idiot. And he goes, uh, wallet phones. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Emma, I just want you to know, this was Dave's fucking idea. Whoa, hey, hey now. It was my hey idea now. to do the tattoo, yeah, but it, okay. the wallet phone was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> was Dave. Um, all right, so as that prep is happening, we'll get on with the story. But things uh, sort of, now you're just in limbo. You've won the lawsuit. Um, you've been uh, awarded a, a grip of cash mm-hmm. that you may or may not ever see. I really hope you do. You're a good fucking get it all. And there's and it's like your life's mission now to just make them pay. Yeah, pretty. For, well, for what you you're know, owed. I mean, my, my life's mission is to eventually live out in the middle of the woods with no one else but my wife and dogs and maybe a cat. Mm-hmm. But my, like, Plan B is to just spend the rest of my life getting every fucking penny of this money yeah. out of them, as you uh-huh. as as you should. Oh, and yeah. and there's a criminal lawsuit happening as well. Or nope, is there is called there is not any criminal uh, okay uh, charge or anything going on to Which my seems knowledge cra- right now, now. I know this is poking the bear, and I know mm-hmm. you're going to be like, yeah, duh. But that seems crazy to me. How can yeah. a judge find all of those things mm-hmm. to be true, right, in the civil lawsuit, and there be no criminal case? I don't. Well, the the state has to bring a criminal case, okay, which they very much can and very much might do. But at the, at this time, it's low on their priority list, sort of thing. Or yeah, like, I mean, we have not like reached out to the DA, okay, or anything okay. like that. You know, my my logic is I want to get my fucking money first. Yeah, yeah <laughs> they've got yeah. high paying jobs. This is a good time to okay. not push that. However. Okay. Obviously, you know, yeah, we do think that they should face criminal charges. I mean, they they embezzled hundreds of thousands of dollars from their friends, um, even, in my opinion, family members uh, through some other business relations. I mean, I mean, these, all of this stuff is obviously criminal in yeah. nature, particularly because you know most of the charges were related to fraud. So uh, that that is very much something that could still happen. Yeah. Okay. God, I hope so. God, I'm, you and me both, brother. <laughs> I don't know how you sleep at night. I will say this, Dave. You've been through a lot. You're now, what are you, what are you 19 years old? Yeah, and 17. you you haven't... This is all illegal. I... Don't say that. <laughs> at your age, with less stress, I think I was covered in gray hair. Uh, so I mean, they're, they're popping in. They're getting there, yeah. but you're doing great, man. Yeah, I'm just sure. trying to say you're the doing great. great. Yeah, I mean, maybe my, you hold it inside. My, my doctor has only told me that I'm literally dying of stress two or three times in the past year. Okay, so, right. yeah, yeah. Cortisol <laughs> levels great. <laughs> so let's dive. Why don't we dive into the new brewery? So yeah. uh, you start it. <laughs> you start it right after the the shit hits the fan, yeah. basically. But so it's been it's been a few years now, and. And how's it going? So, I mean, New Spring was essentially, uh, you know, first off, New Spring is the same LLC that, you know, Flat Tail always was. So we are really essentially the same. So with your same silent partners, too? or Yes. Yes. The same silent partners. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And it, it was really created as like this. We need a placeholder so that we can keep paying off debt. I can keep brewing beer. And we can we can get through this because obviously us having to declare bankruptcy would not have been real conducive for winning a lawsuit. Sure. Yeah. So uh, it, you got to show that you're the responsible ones. Well, plus, I just don't I don't know the best way to say this is, but like I I've been brewing beer professionally since I was like 19 or 
20, 19, I think. Um, this is what I do. Yeah. And one of the hardest things through this whole process was like losing the love for the beer industry because of everything that had happened to us. Right. Uh, but, but what I didn't lose was the love for actually making fucking beer. Um, that's what I do. Okay, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just looking at the... We just got this. your... Uh, if you're yeah. watching on YouTube yeah, sure, right now, work. you can see it all, by the way. Yeah. Uh, the, the wallet phone has just well, been the buttons placed. buttons are on there. May as well um, go for it now. What do we think? Do we like the buttons? I, so the question we're mm-hmm. trying to figure out is, does it look enough like a wallet phone? It's half of a wallet with an antenna, and then it has the <laughs> buttons you know, that you dial a but phone that, with. Or mm-hmm. we can just um, shave that out without the buttons. I say keep the buttons, dude. Keep the buttons? I'm, no, keep the buttons. Keep I'm a buttons guy. Because otherwise, I don't know. Although then it's almost just going to look like a... This I is like the how funny it's the part. two of you having the discussion about what <laughs> to do with the yeah, tattoo on my fucking yeah, arm. Yeah, yeah. You're fine. Uh, just shut you know, up, dude. That said, like, yeah, just fucking do something, and I'm good with <laughs> it at this point. Well, because here's what I think. Well, here's what I think. No one's going to know what the fuck it is anyway. Absolutely. You and I are going to know it's a wallet phone, and that's about it. Um... And in that in that sense, I say in keep the sense. buttons because that makes it funny. Mm-hmm. For the other person, if we re- if we remove the buttons, but then it just looks like a wallet with a weird stick so, sticking so out here, of it. So here's my philosophy on <laughs> tattoos. Like I got some good ones, I got some bad ones. Yeah, yeah. My my first tattoo was a line from Antigone that I got for my brother while he was going through like a painful divorce, okay. but everyone yeah. thinks it was for like a high school girlfriend. Yeah. My second tattoo was the fucking stone sublimely self-righteous logo on my goddamn calf and it's like a foot long. <laughs> okay, yeah. Turns out when I was 18 I didn't realize I was going to own a brewery 3 years later. <laughs> um for me like do I would I get the stone logo tattooed on my fucking body right now? Absolutely right. not. And yeah. yes, I am still considering like putting some kind of like Sapporo dig on there. <laughs> uh for yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh but I like the value of tattoos in bringing you back to the place you were when you got them. Right. When I got that stone tattoo, I loved the idea that stone's logo was a gargoyle because gargoyles were supposed to ward off evil spirits and, you know, it was warding off bad (laughs) brewing practices. I bought the fuck into that. Yeah. Yeah. And when I, when I look at that tattoo, I don't think, Oh God, fucking damn it. I got some other brewery sellout bullshit logo on my body. I think this is where I was when I was 18 yeah. and I was so goddamn passionate about this industry already that that meant something to me. <laughs> you know, I, I yeah. don't really want, I mean, excuse me. I, I love having the hop grenade all over my bicep. <laughs> yeah. uh, but what I really think about is going from like you know, the first time I listened to the Brewing Network, I was a fucking fanboy. Yeah. And then, like, I met you guys, and you turned into real people, and, you know, I'm lucky enough to call you and JP and Bev and Warren and, you know, fucking rest in peace, Tasty, and yeah, a bunch of yeah, other yeah. Uh, BNers over the years, you know, friends of mine. Which and like that stupid logo tattooed yeah, to your body. It's a bad logo. And it's giant. Yeah, it's it really massive. it really is. Like, the new logo's better. I, I wish I could have <laughs> It's so much better. That. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's as bad I as don't even allow people to get the new headphones that are yeah, fucking yeah, up on me. Right. Oh, oh my God, now they're actually working. Oh, this you got your great. two ears back? Yeah. Yeah, oh, and gone again. Anyway. All right, well, if you're watching once again on YouTube, or if you're listening, you can go to uh, youtube.com slash the Brewing Network, and uh, at any time, you can be listening a year from now and you can actually watch Dave Marley Avivu get tattooed uh, with the uh, the first ever uh, the first as we know wallet phone tattoo. I don't think I anybody else so. has a wallet in phone. history. Yeah. I mean, I haven't Googled it or anything, Are but we going uh-huh. the buttons? Um, button me up. Yeah, ask Dave. I- I've answered yeah, yeah, enough just, for Dave. Yeah, yeah, throw the fucking buttons right. on there. Let's yeah, do it. Right. It's a little extra. So uh, there we go. Shoot, yeah. I can even put you on the big screen. And so while we're doing this, we are going to be yeah, simultaneously. Let's uh, taste yeah, let and talk this, uh, about your beer. Real quick. Okay. So uh, which one are we trying first? So the uh, lighter one. Okay. That is a beer called Indomitable, uh, which I brewed. Basically, like in the weeks leading up to the lawsuit, I figured like this is a good time to put something in tank that is going to take a while because I'm going to be kind of busy for the next, you know, few weeks. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and it had been a long time since I had done something really uh, Dave <laughs> huh? 
Yeah, you know, like something that that wasn't like a style that was just something that I I thought uh, would be fun to brew, fun to make, and that fit a flavor profile I was really going after. So I love brute beers. I love Belgian Golden Strongs. I love headphone jacks that work. If you want to fuck with that at all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I at the time, I, I uh, my good buddy, Charlie, who's one of the guys who helped us move out and, you know, allegory and logs and all that good stuff. Uh, he was working for Skagit Malt, hmm. uh, which at the time was a great local malting house. And so we decided to use Skagit pills. I wanted to use enzyme from the mash to make a brute beer. And I also decided to ferment it with 100 percent champagne yeast. OK. At 48 degrees. Uh, to like, you know, see if that's a thing that you can do. Uh, so another 15 barrel pilot batch. And I had this kind of image in my mind of like something kind of celebration themed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Trying to, you know, party in a glass, li li live positively and thinking about champagne, thinking about kind of New Year's flavors. So, uh, this one was all Skagit pills. And then I made a 50, 55 gallon batch of simple syrup with almond flour. Uh, almond flour gives a lot of body without a ton of like almond flavor. Where did you uh, find, like, who suggested almond flour? So I was doing my third or fourth almond beer and uh, walking through the aisle at Costco. <laughs> and there it is. And like, hey, oh. almond flour. Okay, yeah. That's probably a thing. Interesting. Yeah, so I, I've previously used almond flour in the mash for like the chocolate almond porter, uh, cherry almond porter. But uh, this time I did the simple syrup which really gave it this like surprisingly full mouthfeel despite the fact that the finishing gravity on this beer is like 0.96. Okay. Um, and then I also used one of my favorite ingredients, Noyo. And Noyo traditionally is the kernel inside the pit of the apricot. So uh, that's what's used historically to make um, uh, amaretto. Okay. And I, I had in previous uh, brews we've done with this we've you know done like an apricot sour or something and then we've done it all by hand i didn't have time so i ordered some noyo uh but still processed it by hand made an extract wasn't ready in time and found out that uh danny the brewer at Kalapuya, happened to have this bucket of plum pits and kernels okay uh Sounds from a, gross yeah from a plum beer that she had been soaking in ethanol okay and uh, you know we figured like let, let's Let's taste it, and maybe this will be something kind of similar to Noyo, and the flavor was incredible. Uh, Noyo traditionally has, like, almond, lilac, uh, and just these really subtle but awesome notes, and you, you don't get a ton of it in the beer. I, I wanted to keep with the kind of Belgian tradition of, like, spices, but you can't put your finger on anything. Okay. So it's finished with Noyo extract, also 100% naturally carbonated, uh, and 11%. So... It's Duval with a subtle twist, mm -hmm. right? Like, I don't know how, but to me, I'm like, oh, perfect. It's a nice, dry yeah. bit of heat, a uh, uh, Belgian strong, uh, but with a little sweetness. And then in that little sweetness is like kind of grape, kind of something. And maybe that's the... Yeah, that, totally. Maybe that, that's, that's exactly the noyo. What, that's yeah, the thing okay. you're not putting your finger on. Yeah. What was so funny to me is like the first... Uh, and this was fermenting in tank for over two months. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it was like a point a day, uh, which was awesome until we won the lawsuit. And then I was like, I really fucking need to sell this beer. <laughs> uh, so it, it started as this just super neutral... Super clean. And then uh, once I got down to about 1020, I bumped the tank up to the mid 50s. And immediately it got this like classic Belgian yeast profile. Yeah. And it was great. Was that because, your first flinch right there? What was that? I don't know. You just, your, your voice trailed off just for a second. Oh, I just, I'm sorry. I didn't notice. <laughs> was I think no I was just looking at your face. <laughs> <laughs> I was just checking because I haven't seen you flinch yet. You're such a, you're, you're I'm such a, a fucking weirdo. You're a professional. I, I, I like tattoos. Okay. Yeah. It's, uh, so this I, has been going great for you so far. Oh, no. Just I now. got no issues here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, Carry on then. <laughs> so it, it turned into like, you know, it was supposed to be this kind of like fun twist on a Belgian Golden Strong, and then it really just ended up being a Belgian Golden Strong. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's delicious. Well, thank you. Yeah, and does this sell well, or this was just a weird one-off and that's that? Man, yeah. people review it so well. Yeah, All like oh, seven God. kegs that I've sold over the last three okay, months. Right. Yeah. I'll go give a review. Of there that. you go. Yeah, Fucking, yeah. I swear to God, if it's three stars, <laughs> I'm coming back for another yeah. show. Well, actually, three stars is fine. What's worse? Versus four stars, but not a negative comment. Yes. Right? They're like four stars. <laughs> what could this I have done better? This beer is so amazing. I loved every drop, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Four stars. Well, I don't know if you remember when we did the, like, uh, this might have been a JP only show, but we did the Brewers read, like, mean untapped reviews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of yeah. my fucking Colts reviews were just brutal that way. Are there New Spring uh, uh, untapped oh, reviews? Oh, God, don't you fucking dare. Check I'm sure way. there are. Last I checked, we had, like, a 3.8 something, so, you know. Like total? Decent. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, I'll take a look, you know, just because you care. See, I, I make light beer, and that puts me at an immediate disadvantage. Well, yes and no. I mean, okay, you're right about that. Um, <laughs> yes yeah, just, no, but just yes. hands down, you're right yeah, about yeah. that. But uh, the the fact that loggers are coming back, and it's kind of, a, you know, maybe it helps, you, you might it, get your time to shine. You just, you almost never see, like, the fives. You never see a cream ale, which, you know, the split light. I call it an American light ale. It's a fucking cream ale. You gotta change that name, by the way. It's the fucking best name ever, man. You love it. (laughs) You gotta change that name. How do I go to Untapped where I can search shit? You don't need to do that. So the Ah, other beer we we, we have in in front of us, uh, if you go back to the early days, there's this motherfucker named Mike who gave every one of my beers at least two one-star reviews. Clearly, I wronged him (laughs) deeply at some point in the history of Flat Tail. Uh, and oh, he, yeah, we yeah. remember Mike. Uh-huh. He, he would <laughs> tag love- his buddy, yeah. and each of them would review every single beer I released as one star some multiple times. <laughs> so, you know what, buddy? I'll be the first to tell you. Just stop fucking drinking the beer. Did we ever right? discover who Mike is? I forget. No, yeah. no. Oh, he was very so. angry at you. Yeah. Dude, you're not even on Untapped. You're so irrelevant. What are you so about? Far. Yeah, I, I don't know. I it's can't find there. you. Well, you're not looking hard. Is enough. it New Spring one word? New Spring beer two three words. Beer. Yeah. Not brewing. Well, it could be that too. I don't know what they put on Untapped. It I says brewing there. on your shirt. Well, someone else made that. This is one of three New Spring shirts that exist. New Spring. Okay, when I put that in. Yeah. <laughs> What's weird is when I put in New Spring Beer, New Spring Brewing finally comes up. Yeah, sure. That's probably my legal name. Dude, your reviews are fine. You've got uh, four stars on Maybe It's Beer. Oh, that's three years old. Fun. Okay. You've got uh, three and a half, uh, more than three and a half. Yeah, fuck that guy. On Spring Break Blonde. That's not a beer I've ever made. I was like, you're still doing this thing, Dave? No, I literally, that's not my beer. Um, But I'm glad it got at least 3.5. That's it. Nobody cares about you. On, yeah, uh, I know. I'm a sad, yet. lonely man. I'm trying to make you. I'm trying to make people care about you with this show. I mean, you you so. don't think I'd go on your podcast if you weren't my only friend, right? <laughs> right. You're like, I really need the the publicity. Uh, all right. The second beer. You, yes, yeah. is the Double Hoppy Red from Kalapuya Brewing. So Kalapuya is like my host brewery, basically, and I also do uh, consulting for them right now. Okay, working with their sales team. And uh, Danny uh, is the brewery there, or brewer, Jesus fucking Christ. Danny is the head brewer at Kalapuya. I'm not going to try to pronounce her last name. It's even harder than mine. But she came in and very young, inexperienced brewer and has just done such a fucking fantastic job. Nice. She has uh, taken the beer quality there through the roof. So I, I'm super stoked to work with her and work in that space. And they've been just awesome partners through this whole process. Amazing. So this beer's, I love this beer. Yeah, a uh, lot super of toffee, classic like red IPA. Super dry though. Uh, yeah, right. So like what, it's not a multi red IPA. What, what's funny is like when uh, we were talking, she was just asking a couple questions about like brewing for competition because this was a GABF entry, and one of the things we talked about was like we both really. Are, are big on dry beer. Yeah. But, like, you got to not make this beer as dry as we like our beer. Yeah, this yeah. would fail at JBS. Yeah. So because it, of it, that. It, it did, along with all of my beers. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. As soon as it was done, uh, we're, we're, like, tasting the beer and talking, and we both kind of look at each other and it's like, 
you know what's wrong with this, right? Yeah, yeah, like it, yeah. It's the thing that's right with this that's wrong with this. Yeah, yeah. So when you said it to me, like, do you want this one or that one? I was like, ah, I guess the red one. But my thought was that it'd be too sweet. Uh, it's definitely nah. not too sweet. No, I think it was 1009. Nice. FG, yeah. But it's We're, got a big front flavor. It mm-hmm. just, just vanishes, but then it really vanishes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, a, it's a drying palate cleansing yeah. finish. Yeah, That's, yeah. That's a nice beer. Yeah, it is. They've oh. been killing it. Okay. How's your tattoo doing over there? I don't know. I haven't looked at it yet. Hold well, on. it's on camera now it's for like, those of you at home. It's, it's got it's, wallet slats. It's, it's got a grid. It's, it's got buttons. Yeah, it looks like a wallet. It looks wallet adjacent. It's got a it's mm-hmm. wallet adjacent. Yeah, Let me just I say mean, you that, and like, I are gonna know. My my level of regret is lower than I expected at this point. <laughs> well, it's still this yeah. night one. Usually, it's the next day, isn't it? So, yeah. So yeah. I'm sharing a hotel with my old man tonight, and I can't wait to show up. I'm just like, so how how the podcast go? Like, yeah, I got a tattoo. <laughs> Like why? Get, get ready to be keep... disappointed again. Yeah, again. yeah. You, you know, what my mother said to me before I went on the show, <clears throat> "Don't curse so much." Oh my god! Oh, she listened to the last shows. I hope not. Well, the, oh, so you just curse normally? Is oh, what yeah, she's saying? Yeah, I see. Oh, yeah, because we all curse a lot on uh-huh. the shows. I thought maybe she was like, "I've heard you before. The shows are fine, yeah, yeah. but maybe don't curse so much this time." <laughs> You know, she she's that, also uh, Italian, so yeah. that works. Maybe yeah. they, uh-huh. like Italian Jewish. I don't uh-huh. know what it is. Somewhere she's somewhere, somewhere from New York. The, d- Maybe sure. don't yeah. curse so much this time. <laughs> this is uh, this is going off the rails here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So I'm going to take us to another break, but then that's it. When okay. we come back, right. we're finishing your tattoo. We're going to play Get well, to Know Dave. Wait, what the fuck about your tattoo? tattoo? Come on here. Oh, no, I'm bailing on that. Uh, yeah, no, that's not happening. We have um, like nine beers left to try. By the way. You're right. I'm, I, no, I'm doing it. I, I was not going to do this on air because I really honestly uh, wanted you to have a choice in the matter. But since I'm mm. literally getting tattooed by your girlfriend that I just met <laughs> yeah. um, on air, uh, <laughs> I, I'm going to go ahead and, and do a little teaser for you, which is that if anyone has uh, watched previous episodes, you may remember the Backcountry Brewing episode where a bottle of beer that I made by chewing up oats and spitting them into a portable... Yeah, you are so upset right now. Uh, spitting them into a silicon folding pot mm. and then fermenting it in a Rotopax on the side of my dirt bike while I rode 800 miles, I found a low fill of that beer made mostly out of my spit. God. And I did bring it with me. And I fully expect it to be incomprehensibly terrible i'm starting i'm not joking i'm starting to gag right me now. too but i'm still willing to make you drink that i can't do it i would rather get a larger wallet phone than taste i'm that. willing to trade tasting the beer for a <laughs> neck placement of the tattoo the i think neck. that's fair oh yeah, so go I ahead can't. and you know get on instagram and social media whether or not you want justin to drink my spit beer uh, yeah, i think that's a good decision I'm about uh-huh. to throw up. Is the first wallet phone done? It's on camera right now, and uh, I think it looks good. I think it looks. Good. I think Sean would be proud. He, he was actually upset that he wasn't here to get one with us. Oh, so did he text you already? Uh, you yeah, yeah, I got a couple of those. He won't be so upset. <laughs> Listen, this could become your most popular tattoo at uh, in your flash sheet. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. We have no idea. Wallets right. are coming back. <laughs> oh, and f- phones are already back. Flip phones are coming back. Add a wallet to a phone. Come on. It's brilliant. All right. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, more tattoos. And we're going to play Get to Know Dave. Mm. Hang in there. It's the session. Welcome back to the program. Thanks for staying tuned to the session where, you know, for the first time in a long time, things are getting weird. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I thought that the show's grown up. We don't do this stuff anymore. But fuck it. Dave comes to town. And I'm like, let's just get tattoos on the air. I do what I do. And then I said, what, what do you think we should get? You know, maybe something cool like some hops and some hop vines and some whatever. And Dave's like, wallet phone. <laughs> and as soon as he said it, I was on the fence when I brought up tattoos. But the moment you said wallet phone, I'm like, oh, I mean, yeah. to be fair, I yeah. also suggested a can of bean dip. So, I mean, we, we had a plan B. <laughs> yeah, that's true. There yeah, was a, yeah. literally a plan B, <laughs> if you think about it. Uh, all right. So, um, 
I'm about to get my tattoo. If you tune into our YouTube page, even if you're on the podcast right now, you can find it. Just go to youtube.com slash brewing network. You'll be able to see not only the tattoos, but us getting the tattoos, mm. which is not the most exciting video, but at least you'll know it's real. And that, to me and Dave, is the most important, right? We don't care about Always money. Real. We don't care about our Clearly. personal comfort. Definitely not. We <laughs> we, in other words, we care about all the wrong things. <laughs> you know, you hear all these people talk about authenticity and, uh, you know. Just hey, some, I mean, if a wallet phone is not authentico, I don't know, I what, don't know what the fuck it is. <laughs> That's right. Okay, so we've pretty much, uh, other than uh, continuing to talk about new spring beers, because I have some in my glass. In fact, I have three different ones in my glass. We're going to also do the the Get to Know Dave segment as we do beer. Indeed. And you're you're missing, though, that because, you know, as many of your listeners may know, I have a wide range of allergies, uh, including to topical antiseptics. So I just wanted to say that not only... Are vivacity spirits of <laughs> Albany, Oregon, some of the most delicious handcrafted spirits on the market. Yeah. But they're also great for sanitizing your skin when you're getting a tattoo, as as we just did. So sure. not a by the way, Dave's not a Scientologist. So don't <laughs> take his word for <laughs> sorry, scientist. Not yet. I mean Tom Cruise, <laughs> if you want to find my GoFundMe, Justice for Flat Tail. I mean, I, I could be a convert. I would not take that as a legal uh, a representation of how to use. Yeah, please, please drink it. Vivacity it's fucking delicious. Uh, so we, we've got the native gin mm-hmm. over here, which is my favorite. Uh, it's got a really big classic juniper character, lots of citrus. And then uh, Justin over there, who promised me he would never drink hard liquor again, has yeah. the... Uh, yeah, I'm told it can be both peak and PK, which is basically a musket white brandy. Okay. And they are delicious. Are they? They are. Absolutely. Okay. I'm sure they are. Yeah. In fact, whether I like it or not, because I'm not a spirits drinker, mm. I'm going to pretend it's delicious. There you go. You know, my favorite is the Fever Tree uh, Light Tonic. It doesn't have any like sweeteners or shit. It just has less sugar. Okay. And it's an awesome tonic to pair with a native gin. Where do you find it? Like Safeway and stuff. Okay. Yeah. I don't yeah. have to drink this whole bottle. Right? Oh, I can just take a sip. I just not... got a fucking tattoo in right. your studio. Yeah, but, but I can't chug from it From your girlfriend who I met 45 minutes ago. <laughs> right. You are drinking who, the By PK the way, look suspect at best. <laughs> uh, I will drink some. I'm going to take a sip and then uh, I'm not chugging the thing. At least not yet. Yeah, no, it's not a chugging beverage. Okay. okay. Come on. Drink mm. it with some refinement. Mm. Beast. Oh. Absolutely delicious. Mm. <sighs> yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Apparently, my tattoo is not in the right spot. Yeah, you were stretching. Do you want to play Get to Know Dave? Well, I guess so. We didn't talk about your beer though. You put another beer in oh, my glass. No, didn't actually, you? I I put a two town cider in front of you. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. So one of my goals here was to slowly get you drunk on the products of all of the people that have supported me throughout the past several years. It's working. And uh, did they all conspire as well? Did they like send down the right thing? You know. No, I actually I texted Lee like, "Hey, I'm going on that fucking podcast again. Like, I'm going to grab a bunch of booze from your tasting room. What should I get? Yeah. Uh, and of course, I brought down all the things he didn't tell me to do. I I forgot to grab the Craftwell cocktails are doing awesome mm. cider based uh, 20% you know basically bottled margarita old fashioned killer cocktails <clears throat> but what we're drinking right now is the serious scrump from two towns yes from two town cider house I believe this bottle is like five years old oh it's really a, yeah it's a keeved cider which what does is, that mean? Uh, yeah, God, I meant to Google that again yeah, before yeah. we did this. I really did. Sounds like weed or something. There's like. something with like uh, minerals and gelatin and and all sorts of really scientific stuff that Dave Takish explained on your show oh. several years ago. So just look up Two Towns. Yeah, so go on to the, the, the archives and go to the uh, Two Towns show, and you'll hear all about why this cider is so delicious. Uh, self. Uh, just a self plug for them, like not paid and not because you're here. My girlfriend and I drink a lot of Two Towns. Oh, yeah. And we really do. It's our one of, if not mostly, our favorite cidery. And we've just gotten into their, not a surprise, their imperial ciders. Yeah. Like they're, but not because it has higher alcohol. They're just no, the, delicious. The prickly pear. The cosmic, whatever. Oh, yeah. The it's cosmic. a whole That's series dangerous. of cosmics. We, um, 
I actually acquired a keg accidentally mm-hmm. and was like, I'll just take this home. <laughs> just found it It'll in the be good for parties or something. It was like one of my favorite yeah. ever. Their higher alcohol c- ciders are kind of incredible. Th- they're like a weirdly awesome place. Yeah. Because yeah. When, when Two Towns opened... Uh, I met them through you, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, we were their first draft account in Corvallis when they were making cider out of like 50-gallon plastic tanks. And now they have more 200-barrel vessels than I can count. Okay, yeah. Uh, I mean, the, they're, they're just a fucking empire. Good for them. They're good actually, for, they deserve it. Because yeah. there's some of the best cider Well, they're, they're good to their employees. They're, it's all just... It's cool to see people be successful and also still good people. Yeah, yeah. So that's delicious. Yeah, it is. All right. So I started this segment a while back... Um, this year, really, where I get to ask questions that aren't beer questions. And oh, they're boy. random. I don't give you a clue uh, ahead of time. So you just have to answer uh, on the fly. I mostly have a set of them that I ask everybody, which I will use for you, too. But I also, I also wrote some special ones for you. Yeah, that's what concerns me. Yeah, I thought we'd start with those. Oh, good. <laughs> As I'm getting... I'm, am I placed? Am I about to get... Yeah, you're okay. placed. You're about to get started. I'm about to get a about to get tattooed as I I'm going to shout boo really loudly as many times as I can over the next 10 minutes. So Dave, mm. getting to know you. Which of your former partners would you kill first? <laughs> <laughs> I, by the way, I came up with these before I even got the story from you, and I just knew that something was there. I, I'm pretty sure my <laughs> legal legally, counsel yeah. would advise me against answering that question. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. If you want to be a pussy, don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, here we go. Question number two. Um, this is not starting off well. Based on all that we've... We know you very well on this show. Yeah, a little so bit. do our so do our listeners. Mm-hmm. And now we've learned more. Shout out, Ron. Why hasn't your super hot wife left you oh, yet? God damn it. Oof. I'll tell you what. Real it's, question. It's not anything physical. Um <laughs> You know, <laughs> right. uh this is not gonna be a funny answer. No, I but know. Honest but honestly, I, I to still God, want it anyway. Yeah. I mean I you know, the the emotional struggles of going through this whole thing as a married couple, like it's going to do one of two things. It's going to rip you the fuck apart yeah. real fast. Yeah, yeah. Or it's going to bring you together in a way that nothing else can. Right. And I very much look forward to a point in my life where trauma bonding is not the only form of bonding that I am capable of. Right. But- Ow! <laughs> You can't do that. No, I was just kidding with you. It's fine. <laughs> he wasn't you. kidding. Sorry. It's if you're watching, if you're watching YouTube, yeah. by I the just... way, that was just the napkin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, right, I'm but, getting my tattoo. Go on. But like, I mean, we honest to God, like this isn't just a, a one liner for radio. Like we have grown together as a couple in a way that I never would have imagined anyone could in you know going through something like this i mean i've been working multiple jobs for years now emma's been working multiple jobs for years now you know i had the highest paying job of my life for two years in a row and we never saw any of that gosh all all the while just coming home every night wondering like we didn't know we were going to win we knew we should win right but you never know what a jury's going to do. Right. So that constant anxiety, fear, stress, everything. Uh, I'm not going to pretend like there weren't times where it felt like things were bad and like things uh-huh. were obviously terrifying. But yeah, at the end of the day, we always came back towards each other. Sure. And uh, she, Jesus Christ, fucking, I knew you were going to get me emotional. See, son it's of a not bitch. that hard. Uh, anyway, no, I, I, I mean, Emma is the thing that got me through this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, um, you know, we got really good at maximizing what little time we had together. Yeah. Uh, you know, we'll like, uh, I try to jam as much work as I can into every day so that on Friday night, whether it's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 PM, when I get home on Friday, I do everything I can to have Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that obviously doesn't work out. <laughs> like, 
I, I won't say a majority of the time, but, <laughs> but like not often, but even. like a fucking yeah. majority of the time. Yeah, yeah. But when it does, you know, uh, our things, we, we don't go out to eat. We don't go dancing. She would probably like to go dancing. I really need to learn how to dance. But right. what we do is, you know, we, we love backpacking. We love camping. We love going out into the middle of the woods where no one else is. Yeah. So we'll leave at like Friday night, you know, leave the house at 7 p.m. in the middle of the winter, head out into the woods, uh, try not to get stuck and if we do we just set up our hammocks or our, our tent and we camp yeah we, we do a ton of uh being with know, each other yeah just yeah. just each other and the dog okay. and fill the cat feels right. pretty cool and then just to quell the critics you know i asked that question one mm-hmm. way don't answer it it's the same question <laughs> why does your amazingly wonderful and smart and capable and incredible wife have not left you rather than like a hot wife like uh, it's the whole woke yeah thing. you, you totally to saved that yeah. all right anyway yeah. here we go next one how is it that you were stupid enough to open another <laughs> brewery good. after flat tail well i didn't it's the same LLC, so it. I uh, see. Yeah, I don't know what so the you fuck just else transferred to do, man. No, this is a I real mean, answer. Yeah, no, but it, it, that's part of it. But the other, probably bigger part is, you know, I, I went through this phase uh, when when COVID happened. I, I mean, I think there was like a universal bender for several weeks after March 16th, where everyone in the industry just like shut down and grieved and attempted to process whatever the fuck was happening. Sure. Uh, but after that, I very much, you, you know, I, I told Emma, I, I told many people, like, I, I'm going to go fucking pump gas. Yeah. Like, just like whatever. Shit yeah. anymore. Like, uh, I mean, w- there is no way I'm going to go back to this industry that has been nothing but heartbreak for so long. And it was so easy to be negative about everything. Yeah. Yeah. But little by little. <sighs> And I think at the beginning, subconsciously, and eventually I realized, like, I I don't hate brewing. Right. I hate what these people did to me, and I hate what happened as a result of that. It was more about bad people than than the industry. Yeah, Yeah. and and ultimately, like, I don't... Especially because it turns out you were one of the most successful breweries in town. Yeah. I know you hate even hearing it, but... Yeah, that that one stings a bit. Yeah. More than the tattoo, she has a gentle hand. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Yeah, I know, you did great! (laughs) Like I said, I trust you, just not him. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, so, you know, it, it it didn't, thankfully, it didn't take more than just you know, a few years. For, <laughs> so he's not over it. For me, to, you know, and there were glimpses. Like, I remember when I when I was able to brew Kolsch for the first time again at yeah. New Spring. And, you know, we did it as Blue Liner Kolsch, which was not a thin blue line thing. It's blue lining like fishing. I want to make that very clear. Thank you, everyone on fucking Reddit and all of the hundreds of emails I got. Um, and then when, when we won the trial, even though obviously things are still a fucking nightmare yeah, and we're still very much embroiled in it, uh, the, the immediate reaction was like, you know, that, that two week euphoric period. Yeah. I brewed beer and it was fucking amazing. Nice. And, and just for that brief window being able to brew and, and think like I'm brewing a beer I want to brew unencumbered for kind the first time back. in so long. God damn. Yeah. I, I love being a brewer. Yeah. I, I don't love lifting and washing all of my own kegs, but I do love brewing beer. Okay. So that was a little roundabout, but I no, think that's I probably like an answer. This is why that. we're doing it. Uh, I'm going to go back to some of my normal questions. Okay. Then I'm going to come back to my Dave only questions, but, um, what's the what is a habit good or bad yeah that you picked up from your parents oh like something to this day that you just it's just kind of a habit or a or a thing that you picked up you know mom or dad i don't care yeah i i like moved out when i was 16 yeah, but you you're, um, you said your dad invested in the company. I mean, totally. you have some relationship. He's sleeping in a hotel like two miles away. So is um, there anything about them that's like, it, it doesn't oh. have to be a habit either. Like, you know what I mean? Like that yeah. hand-me-down that we can't get away from. Good or bad, maybe it's a good one. I don't know. I Here's, here's a good and bad one. Um, you know, my dad was always huge on the work ethic thing. Yeah. And I actually had a conversation with him. Was. Yeah, this weekend. Yeah. yeah. You know, he he's sold motorcycles and he sold cars and he became a quite 
you know, successful like stockbroker and uh, financial advisor. Yeah, yeah. So you take and this. To, your work ethic is pretty solid. So I, I always got the you know, if you work the hardest you can, yeah. you can do anything. Yeah, America, yeah, yeah. American yeah. dream, all that shit, and. That was something that I was so proud of for so many years. And don't get me wrong. Like, I'm still very much proud of my work ethic. And I'm glad that my father passed that on to me. Yeah. But the flip side of that is it it contributed very heavily to not only that laser focused attitude that got me into a lot of trouble. But, you know, as much as everyone thinks I'm this fucking insane guy who does all this crazy shit like i've been working 80 hours since i was like 18 yeah like i i I don't get out much just when i do it's so pent up that you know that's why dave is dave so the work um yeah so the work ethic and and i i think that's important but i also think do go fuck around in europe with a backpack when you're 20 like that's a good thing to do life experience is valuable too it's not just what you put in and what you get out. Life is not a fucking math equation. Mm. You know, so I, I do wish that I had uh, explored myself and explored kind of the world a little bit more prior to really laser focusing on business more. Okay. By the way, I think I want to get all my tattoos on air from now on. Yeah. yeah. I don't feel a thing. I mean, do you usually feel something from like oh, yeah. two oh, yeah. centimeter oh, yeah. wide tattoo? Oh, little yeah. Little oh, okay. Bus. Yeah. yeah. We will bust. <laughs> So we call our dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you could retire incredibly wealthy tomorrow, mm. where would you live? Oh, man. Can the answer be like northern Idaho minus the Nazis? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I like, said incredibly wealthy. Okay. You can like root them out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Takes a lot of money. I, I mean, like, what are yeah. we talking like Coeur d'Alene here? Like, uh, uh, yeah, I'm not good with the whole geography. But thing. you know, like we, up on the rivers I, and I the lakes. I want to be out the... in the middle of nowhere, next to water and yeah, trees yeah. and I gotcha. squirrels and okay. you know that kind of shit. Yeah, that that is absolutely uh, my end game. Like, yeah. if I win the lottery. I am building my, like, friendland compound, mm. which uh, uh, I owe part of that concept to Lee at Two Towns. We've got a master plan. Nice. Uh, but I mean, yeah. in the compound, too, so oh. we're going to talk after oh, the show. Oh, yeah. But, Seriously. like, not a compound like literally every other compound in history. Like, like a, a cool good one. one. Like a cool like one. A yeah, like like yeah. the Rajneeshis minus yeah. the poisoning yeah, and I got the murder. You. Yeah, no, it's yeah, cool. all that. Yeah. Something like that. I'm with you. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um. Okay. What are you super into <laughs> that nobody knows about? Like, I mean, like a like what fucking weird thing you're like, oh man, it turns out I'm into. Dude, I'm a fucking open book, man. <laughs> so there's no, like I, you don't have some weird hobby, like some weird comic I mean, book thing, like, like I, I, anime. I, I, are I don't you know sure? What? I watch a lot of anime. You do? do you? Yeah, for no, sure. You, oh, absolutely. Don't. Seven you Seeds was a great not. one. Uh, Attack on Titan, horribly depressing, but yeah, exactly. If this is real. Anime. You watch a lot of anime. Yeah, that's not secret though. Okay, no, that's yeah. fine. That's secret to me. I no, guess. I thought it was super fucked up in high school. Yeah, uh, yeah. but then I realized like there's actually a great depth of uh, oh, awesome God. movies, of artistic yeah, expression. Artistic. You know, it's like ska music. It's just <laughs> oh, not whatever. Shut <laughs> up. Okay, three eleven. Um, oh, dude, okay, that's over the line. All right, here's one, here's one of the ones I wrote for you. Amber is not the color of my energy. Um, am I done? No. No. Oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> Still hasn't started. Here we go. How much do you think you really have to live left? Two years. On that crazy motorcycle of yours. Oh. Like, as a, <laughs> like you rode your motorcycle down here. Yeah. You can't really expect that you're going to keep going on like this without a fatal accident, or at least a maiming one soon. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really liked the tact that you approached this question with. <laughs> right. Um, but you know I'm right, Dave. There's only two <laughs> types of motorcycle riders. You have a prominent future at Fox News. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, those who have crashed and those yeah. who haven't yeah. crashed yet. Actually, in your case, I'm sure you've crashed. So I feel like yours, I have to go further. I've high-sided those on Those who are alive and those twice. who are dead. 
I've low sided on pavement once and I lost track of the off road stuff. Um, in all honesty, you're gonna. How long are you gonna stay on this motorcycle before you've like? All right, I my luck's when run I out. can't walk, I will stop riding. Yeah, um, and that's not like a live to ride. Right? No, I got you. America. Go on. Uh, here's my thing. Like I, I grew up. This is another thing my dad did to me. That he might be listening to this podcast. So like, thanks, Hobes. Um, yeah. He used to always tell me these stories about his days selling Ducatis and like, you know, riding uh, through the Berkeley Hills and how amazing it was. But like, don't ever do that because it's super dangerous. It's not worth it. But also, this was the best time of my life. And so I, I grew up with this love of motorcycles from a young age, but they would never my parents would never let me get a dirt bike. Uh so I, you know, I turned 18, immediately sold the car that they helped me buy and bought a motorcycle. Okay. And rode ever since. I, When I bought my GS, the big uh, touring bike that I do my charity ride on, I, I did 20,000 miles a year for the first three years. Okay. So I got to 60K in three years. That bike will have 70K when I get done with this trip. Fine. I don't ride as much anymore. I okay. don't have the All time, right. so I'm probably not going to die soon. Okay. But... But you also, do have the understanding that, like, if you're on the road long enough, you're going to something's bad is going to happen. Right. Well, like that's, I mean, I have literally been thrown yeah. over the top of my bike twice. Okay. Like it happens. I, I've had yeah. people open their doors on me on the yeah. freeway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it's super dangerous. And, you know, PSA, like if you're 50 years old and you think I've never had a motorcycle and I've always wanted to ride one, don't fucking do that. That's really dumb. Right. 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 I do it because I absolutely love it. Like uh, my my uncle who passed gave me this piece of advice like do the thing you love second most as your career okay and keep the thing you love the most for yourself it's fucking great advice yeah Yeah. and i didn't get it at the time yeah but now i do because like i i well obviously i'm slow as fuck and can never professionally be a motorcycle rider so that's convenient but for me that's like my thing yeah and no I, i will never stop doing that Okay. Yeah. All right. And might die tomorrow. I'll text you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. From your from your wallet phone. Uh huh. From your Absolutely. wallet phone. Yeah. Right there. In your opinion, right now, and it could be a band from old or a band from today. Mm. Who's the best band in the world? Oh. Right. Could be way back before we were alive, <sighs> or right now. I who's mean, the, who's the best band when in the world? Journey and Wham <laughs> exist in the same timeline. This is yeah. an impossible question. I mean, I'm a Journey fan. I got uh, you. Yeah. Best band in the world. In the world? Yeah. Oof. All right. We're going to come back to that. Okay. All right. That was a tough one. What food. Like cuisine mm-hmm. or dish, it could be yeah, a specific yeah. dish. Can you not live without? Oh, like Mexican you can food. never. Yeah, Mexican food. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, I mean, like That's good Mexican one. food, bad Mexican food. Yeah, all Mexican food is fantastic. So, as a card carrying Italian, and yeah. I say that because I have to carry a card because only uh-huh. half of me yeah, is we Italian. All do. Yeah, um, still has Mussolini's signature on the bottom. <laughs> Dude, Mexican's my food. It's so I good. I don't think I could live without it. Yeah. Like I, I you have, have good Mexican in Oregon? No. Okay. Still great, though. <laughs> it <laughs> I is, mean, but it's still, yeah. yeah. Wait, I take that back. Tacos yeah. El Machine, a fantastic account of ours, okay. has yeah. great street tacos and burritos. <laughs> yeah, fair. Yeah. Good save, good Real save. Real fucking good. Good save. Um, also, there's this spot that kind of went out of business, but then didn't go out of business um, in Corvallis, La Santa, that has the best rockfish taco I've okay. had in ages. So, like, it, it's great Mexican food, but if you go to Mexico, it tastes nothing like you know yeah. what you're what you're getting up here. No, of but course. But I like it all, uh, all of the above. Having grown up in California, yeah. like almost almost, yeah, yeah, that's the Se- one second choice. Bread, just bread, just bread, just flat out just bread, fucking yeah. bread. Yeah. So if you ever yeah. have to go keto, you're you're not in good shape. No, like, I yeah. I will jump off a cliff. Well, you're still 18 years old, so right, you're exactly. fine. Yeah, Adventure. 16 tomorrow. Yeah, talk uh-huh. to me when you're. Yeah. Then you might have to go keto. Uh, do you like movies? I do. What's the best movie you've seen in the last five years? Five years. I I, know. And then here's why. Because I don't want people picking like, oh my God, you know, Godfather's the best. Like you can't pick a... But in the last five years, 
holding. And by the way, I don't want to hear that like, oh, I was so entertained by eh, some lame ass movie. I'm talking about a good movie. Legally Blonde Five. <laughs> That's what I mean. Uh, like, uh, what's so, it? So good? first off, like my memory span is very short due to the long work hours slash you know shit we talked about over the last like two plus hours. Right. Um, the last movie I remember super fucking enjoying is of course uh, one starring the greatest actor of all time. Nicholas Cage. Oh, tell me. Fucking Renfield. <laughs> oh, I, oh, I haven't so watched it yet. So good. I oh really my want to. God, it's fantastic. Is it good? It's so, so good. I have found it's myself so a newly found or newly admitted Nicholas Cage fan. Everyone was. <laughs> it's yeah, just yeah. cool to admit it now. Right. You know Face Off was the Citizen that, Kane of the 90s. I can't see it, but you it's folks at home can see it. No, I mean, I literally can't see it because it's way back in behind my arm. Good, it's actually just a penis. Which is awesome. It could be horrible. And what do you think, Dave? I'm like, don't worry, it is. How did I do, Dave? You were moving the whole time, so it looks great. From here, it looks like a rectangle. <laughs> I think that's positive. It's a bunch of wobbly rectangles. Uh-huh. Yeah. Was I moving? No. Oh, yeah. By the way, since, since I mentioned train. this off air, Both if Justin gets this hand. covered up, he does have to then double it in size and get it tattooed somewhere else on his body, preferably his face. Okay. I won't. It, I won't commit to the face, but I will commit to if I cover it up, I will get it double in size. Somewhere okay, else. that that's like committed. You heard it no. here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's. I have one more question for you. Oh. <laughs> and oh, I think boy. it's an easy one. That means it's bad. What tattoo do you most regret? <laughs> do you most regret? I won't be offended. <laughs> <laughs> I it's probably I, actually my other one that he has yeah. on his body, not the new one. <laughs> but you know, mean, as of right now, what tattoo you know, do you most regret? Like I said earlier, uh, I would say the most unfortunate decision I have made uh, as far as tattoos is definitely the fucking stone logo. Yeah. But I don't regret any of them. They all have a story. I, I remember where I was when I got them. So I, I'm happy to have every tattoo I have. But uh, in retrospect, yeah. if uh, you know future me could go back in time, I would definitely punch the fuck out of myself before I got that tattoo. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Fair enough. All right, Dave. That's the time we have. Oh, my God. Well, That's give me an- lots of money. Give Erica lots of money. It's another show well done. Sanitize your tattoos with Vivacity Spirits. Yep. Delicious. I mm-hmm. really enjoyed my... Try it. PK. Oh, oh I so did. Good. I tried it. You did a great. Yeah. The PK was no, great. No, I mean, try to pronounce it. Oh, right. Yeah, yes. No. Yeah, that one. I'm a professional. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My job is to be semi professional. Uh, all right. Dave, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Justin. You know, you're welcome anytime, and um, we should do this again. Uh, you're probably going to have another crazy story within at least a year. I'll text you in a week when I start my next brewery. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Uh, you can go to GoFundMe. Uh, just Google GoFundMe Flattail if you want to look up that whole uh, craziness and help Dave. You can also look up GoFundMe Help Lafferty. And help out the charity that Dave is uh, producing beer for, uh, or or produce or, or email Dave about producing the beer, which is new. Uh, oh, God damn it, Dave yeah. at newspringbeer dot com or That's Raptor it. Princess Project at gmail dot com. There we go. Man, first meltdown, first long show. Oh, oh melt! Come on, come I'm on. calling this a meltdown nah. for me. This nah, is a meltdown. This is the new bit. meltdown. Okay, this is the new meltdown. Set your goals higher. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks to Dave for coming down. He rode his motorcycle all the way here. I hope you make it back. Solid maybe. Yeah, solid maybe. Uh, appreciate you being here, sharing all the beer. Two towns. Thanks for sending, uh, or at least... And Kalapuya, yeah. and Vivacity, and Common Fields, and all the other people that have helped me out along the way. And also, you know, maybe Justin. There we He's go. He's kind of cool. Eh. All right. My tattoo's going to get wrapped up. It's like a tiny little wallet phone that I can't even see. I don't even know if it's cool or not. He still doesn't know it's a dick. I can't see it. It's just a dick. (laughs) You could have done that, you know, which would have been funny. I would have laughed. Yeah. I would have sued you, but I would have (laughs) laughed. I don't know. You're all sue happy now. It seems like the right thing to do. I'm great at it. (laughs) Yeah. All right, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks to all of our sponsors. I'm sure they're so proud of this show. (laughs) We'll see you next time right here on the session. Take care of yourselves and your beer. Bye.